All right. Yes, I. Yes, I. Just vibes and just vibes and greetings. Greetings, people. Greetings, Ross Seymour. Yeah, man. Come with it whenever ready. Yes, I. Ready, yeah, ready. Greetings to everyone. We're just holding our vibes as usual. Vibes and holding our reasoning. And we're going to touch on the, the Sabbath, you know, with a little reasoning we started here before we um, start recording. And we decided to, you know, chop it up on the for the people. There's a, a set of religious people with a, with a whatever denomination that they subscribe to that decide that the Sabbath is no longer viable to be held. And then there is another set who says that the Sabbath was changed to Sunday. And those that say that the Sabbath is changed to Sunday use the resurrection of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Yeshua Messiah, as the reasoning for the change of the Sabbath to Sunday and put it on him, which do you, there is no scripture anywhere that shows that he did such things or even practice such things so we're going to touch on a couple things here about the sabbath that if the sabbath is truly abolished by scripture is it in the new testament was the messiah or the apostles observing the sabbath in any way shape or form and should we in this time and dispensation be observing the sabbath so we're going to jump on these subjects here and see what we come out with. And I hope once and when look into these things themselves and see the contradictions in some of these teachings. You know? So I will let the, you know, the rabbi jump in here for a second before we jump into some scriptures. Yes, 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 yes. Rastafari is the rabbi. Yeah, Yeshua, I and I rabbi. But there's something that that he said. He said it's enough for the for the disciple to be as the master. So each of us, you know, we grow in grace. Iron sharpen iron. Give thanks for the reason, man. Even as you had brought it forward before we started recording, <clears throat> I like how you connected it and you simplified it right there. But I'm sure we're gonna get to unpack and expand it. Now the first thing is about the sabbath which one of them could they they're connected you know the different points the sabbath could you mention about the wednesday the wednesday of the week well we'll probably touch on that as we build so the first thing is that there's some sex not or denomination or you know yeah, man they, or whatever okay, they, mm -hmm. yeah they say the sabbath is no longer viable for us to keep so we shouldn't be keeping the sabbath well i don't see no verse and, and and of course, we're seeking to um, um, put that to not even to re rest, you know. Well, well, in a sense, it should rest, you know. That permanently, whole, whole idea, <laughs> permanent rest. You know, so we want to give that we want to give that idea of the Sabbath being somehow changed. We want to give that a Shabbat, a Shabbat, a rest. There's this book I think I showed you before. Um, I like this book because it was so succinctly um, written and drafted. Um, I had made a little change around the office, moved around a few things, trying to get things a little more workable. Because sometimes when you're just working, doing the work, you have to take that time, you know, that break, that rest. There was this book right here. Give me one moment. I want to find this because some of y'all know about it. I think I mentioned it before. It was a Sunday Law, it's a book called The Sunday Law. I like how they kind of summarize the basic arguments that most people use. Now, some people may add something to the argument or they may take away or they may put a spin on it. But essentially, it's the core of their argument. So just hold, hold, hold the line for one moment. All right. Just pause. Yes, yes, yes. So we have this document here. This is called the National Sunday Law by uh, A. Jan Markison. 
This is back in the days before internet, they used to give out these books sometimes. You remember sometimes they would give like free books about the Bible, Christ, or different denominations would give their, you know what I mean? Give out like, you know when they used to give the, the pass out things. And sometimes they would give out books. So here this talks about the law of God, right? As given by Jehovah and as changed by man. And when you say man, it's used the Catholic Church. Okay, here this is the appendix. Appendix 9, it says, the first Sunday law, right? The first Sunday law. Now, was it changed, right? That's the, that's the contention. The contention is that it was changed, right? That God's law had changed. Yet, from studying the scripture, we don't find anywhere in the scripture where God's law, speaking about like the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words, was changed but in the study of history we find that it was men men and people mainly in the church that claimed to be of christ the catholic church kind of owns this now that basically changed the sabbath from the seventh day aka saturday to the first day and on the same reason that my brother just mentioned to the the reason that well christ's resurrection being on the first day but here i like to share this right here apologies brothers and sisters that don't have this on the screen but i'll go to appendix eight change of god's law and this says that although the ten commandments are found this is the quote here although the ten commandments are found in the roman catholic in the roman catholic versions of the scriptures yet the faithful are instructed from the catechisms the catechisms of the church it's like a series of questions and answers right the catechisms of the church and not from the bible as it appears in these catechisms like questions and answers like it's like what the church back in the days the church had like the faqs you know what the faq is right frequently asked questions sometimes you go to a page and they have like the faqs or they give you a sheet FAQs frequently asked questions. So this is what the catechism were. It was a series of questions and answers. Think about what His Majesty Haile Selassie the First said about questions and answers. Like you know that to really fathom the depths of this, we need to go beyond just question and answers. Like he basically was pointing out the bad use of catechisms. Nothing is wrong with questions and answers, but they focus more on the catechisms, the question and answers of the church but that's run by men you know what i mean she the church that's run by men instead of focusing on the bible as it appears in these catechisms the law of god has been changed and virtually reenacted by the papacy right the second paragraph small paragraph this, this is quoted from bible readings for the home washington review and herald 14, uh, 1942, 1942, page 221. It says the second commandment, which forbids the making and bowing down to images, is omitted in Catholic catechisms. So that means the same question and answers that the second commandment. So what it has is like the law is given by Jehovah and then that's changed by man. And uh, if I had a picture to show, because when you see this, it's even more it's more blatant but the second commandment was taken out the second word that begins with um here it says thou shall not make to thee any graven images that that whole paragraph there is basically taken out right and it's saying that and the tenth commandment which forbids coveting is divided into two so what they do in the tenth command in exodus chapter 20 Round about verse like 16 and 17, it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now in the Catholic, what was changed by men, what's changed is that that tenth command is broken down as the ninth, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, and then they split it. The tenth is, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. You see, you see what the Torah says right here, 
God's command or Je Jehovah's command in Exodus chapter 20, it says, Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's wife. Th thou shall not covet th uh, nor, his, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything as that neighbor. So in that one command, in Exodus chapter 20, round about verse 16, verse 17, it has seven things that are mentioned that you should not covet. But then what's changed by man is that they split that tenth word, the tenth command, into two parts and teach men to do so. One is thou should not covet thy neighbor's wife, which is the second thing not to covet in the tenth command as given by Jehovah. In other words, if you follow what man has changed in the Ten Words called the Ten Commandments, it's okay to covet your neighbor's house as long as you covet his wife. <laughs> and then they say, then they make the tenth, they change the whole wording. It says, thou shall not covet thy neighbor's goods. But notice, it doesn't say thy neighbor's goods, it says, thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house, not to covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant. Like, nor his man worker or his female worker, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. But they change it to, thou should not covet thy neighbor's goods. Notice, they didn't say, thou should not covet thy neighbor's house. What I'm pointing out right here is that what the, what the papacy has done is covet John's house. If you understand what I'm saying. Right. Covet Jah's house. See, they pretended to be the church because the church, according to the Bible, is God's wife, according to the metaphorical language, the symbolical language. Now, here it says the first Sunday law. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road on how we come down to this confusion. And you see, most Christians, most most Christians are even if they're not Catholic, they could be Protestant, Evangelical. What they don't know is that what they pretend to believe or say they believe is basically what the Catholics have left on the table. If you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the Catholic is the butcher. You know what I mean? And you said you don't want to eat from the butcher, but but you're eating the scraps that he left behind. Because you're not going to the to to the to, to the bull, the animal or what not and slicing and dicing for yourself. You, you're basically receiving the trash that the Catholic. So in other words, people many times say, that, oh, I'm not Catholic. But their beliefs, the beliefs that they believe not being Catholic are Catholic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Their beliefs are Catholic. I think I asked my mother one time, I said, why do you worship on Sundays? And it was kind of, I could tell it was a little uncomfortable question for her. But basically, I think the answer was because... That's what that, that, that's what people do. She didn't really have a scriptural answer, but it's like tradition. It has become like a tradition. Now in Appendix 9, it says the first Sunday law, the earliest recognition of the observation of Sunday as a legal duty is a constitution of Constantine, they say, in 321 A.D., enacting that all courts of justice inhabitants of towns and workshops were to be at rest on Sunday. And they call this in Latin, Venerabili, Venerabili Dei Solis, the venerable day of the sun. Venerabili Dei Solis. With an exception in favor of those engaged in agricultural labor. So that means that everybody's at rest, but if you're doing a little farming, you could do a little bit on sun, Sunday is what they're saying. But, but for courts of justice, inhabitants of town, workshops, everything was to be at rest on Sunday. And this is according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the ninth edition, and it's an article on Sunday. So it gives other quotes to codes in Roman law where they changed, where they changed well, 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 where they enacted this as law, you know what I mean? Enacted this as law. Now, just going a little bit further right here, um, there is a reason, let me state this, there is a reason, there is a reason why Christians or believers did gather on the first day. 
there is a biblical scriptural reason why they did gather on the first day, but not without observing the seventh day. This is what I want to point out. And that the first day does not replace the seventh day in the early church or among the early Nazarene, but because of their understanding of the events and the understanding of the Torah, of the law, they kept the seventh day, the Shabbat day, and they gathered together on the first day of the week as they did in the biblical times and what's written in the Bible. And we can prove that. Now, you want, you want to go to the proof of that right there? Because I think this is like the, the kind of a joining. It's almost like I think a joining question of what we're talking about right here. You, you, you want to go to that proof right there? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'm so gonna, we're gonna go. Gonna read something. Okay, we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the scripts right here, and we're gonna need to go to um, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter chapter twenty three. Let's go to Leviticus chapter twenty three. So we're gonna we're gonna bring up the sword right here, the, our our east sword right here. The word, um, okay, what is this? My sword, it's called my sword, the, the software. So we're gonna go to on the morrow. I'm gonna put in the word morrow, right? Morrow, not tomorrow, the old English morrow, and after the Sabbath. I'm gonna put morrow and Sabbath, right? And morrow is like the day after, and you know, the Sabbath, according to the scripture, is the seventh day. So we're in Leviticus chapter 20. 1 verse 11. So I'm going to zoom in on because we've gone over these verses before, but we can. It's a 2011? Yeah, Slika, Slika, Salakia, my bad. Um, pardon, I forgive I. Um, no, 2311. Leviticus 2311. 2311. Yeah, I was saying the Exodus 20, 20. <laughs> Exodus 20, 20, yeah. 2311. Because first of all, we got to establish what occurred when Yeshua was crucified, when he was crucified, right? And there's already, you know, there's some who say that that's one of the memes I was trying to, I was trying to find. There's some memes out there from some, you know, some zealous Israelite brothers and sisters. And I love you, brothers and sisters, you know, you all might not agree with this or that, or maybe you do. But some actually like to say that, um... That there is no Sunday worship. And I will agree that there is no Sunday worship for Hebrews. There's no Sunday worship properly in the scripture. But rephrase like they do in court, right? Going to rephrase, right? The first day of the week is what the Romans and the Greeks and the Romans and the later day Christians coming out of Europe is where we get in English today the name of the first day of the week as Sunday. But from a biblical perspective, we don't have a, such a thing called Sunday. We just call it the first day of the week. Because actually, if you think about it, the sun actually will come out hopefully every day, right? <laughs> Right? Hopefully, the sun hopefully. will come out every the, the sun's supposed to rise hopefully every day. So this is something that ones have to pay attention to. When we say that there's no Sunday worship, technically that is correct. But if ones think that there's no worship on that first day of the week or there's nothing that we are to observe on the first day of the week, they would be terribly wrong. And this is, you know, this is where we go with these points. It's a little fine, nuanced point, but it's a point all the same. And here's the proof of it right here as we go to Torah, right? To the law and to the testimony, as Isaiah said. If they don't speak like this, going to the law, the Torah, and to the testimony, even the New Testament, then it's because there's no light in them. It's giving you blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not going to say BS, but I'm going to say human. You know, people, P.S. <laughs> Deuteronomy, oh, Leviticus, Leviticus 23, 11. This section here, this section here, this section here is dealing with, let me get my other sword right here so I can at least narrate what's on the screen right here. 23, 11. Can you read 23, 11, bro, while I get this here? 23, 11. 
and he will wave the sheep back and forth before Jehovah oh, wow. to gain approval for you. The priest could wave it on the day after the Sabbath. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna have to. You probably seen some of the videos where when I go to the Bible, the compare section in the Bible, I have like there's like different scripts. There's like sometimes you see the Hebrew, you see the KJV, you see the different versions that I I, I selected to kind of compare. I'm gonna have to get that one as well. The brothers reading from um, one of the Jehovah the Jehovah Witness version, right? Yes. But the way he's reading it, read it once again, because the Hebrew brings out that sense. Just read it once again about waving the sheaf. And he will wave the sheaf back and forth before Jehovah to gain approval for you. The priest should wave it on the day after the Shabbat. Okay, the priest shall wave it. Now it says back and forth. Um, I'm going to make this note again. Others can pick up and build on it or they can bring some evidence that they can to fight against it. That the original idea that came in the Nazarene to Christian times of the sign of the cross is based on the Hebraic waving. The waving. The waving in the four cardinal directions up and down to and fro. Basically making the sign of the cross. You know what I'm saying? That, that where the true making of the sign of the cross for those who follow the Moshiach in the early times, it came from this act of waving. There's an offering that must be waved. It's almost like, you know when somebody wave, like wave around money, in a sense, or they wave around something. But it was that waving it up and down and from side to side. Basically to the four cardinal directions. You know what I mean? Remember the tabernacles are square, and the cardinal directions are important. It's almost like when we when we have like a bingi or we are chanting down Babylon or we're chanting even praises to the Almighty. It's to the four corners of the earth, like in each direction. It's almost like when you're saging a house. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. and you're going a different direction, so it can be a full circulation. But the wave. The wave is not the important thing right here. What's important is where it says in the King James Version, so we're comparing two versions here. It says, on the morrow after the Sabbath, on the morrow after the Sabbath day. So what is the morrow? How does, how, how, how does your Bible say right there? Is it the morrow or it says another word? What word are you uh, using? The day. The day. So the day after the morrow is that old English. And basically right here, um, the Hebrew is um, Moharat, Moharat, Moharat Tam, Moharat, Moharat, Moharat is basically the day after. So on the day after the Sabbath, what day is the day after the Sabbath? First day. The first day. And, and what do they call the first day among the Romans and Latter-day Christians and nowadays people under the B system? What do they call it? The first day? Sunday. Oh, Sunday. So, like I said to the Israelite brothers and sisters, I actually wanted to have that meme. There's a meme where it's circulating around there that, um, that, that the Hebrews, the Israelites, and Yeshua, or, or Yahusha, um, did, did not worship on Sunday. That is correct according to the English wording. Because they did not use Sunday for the first day. They simply called the first day the day of the first. Yom HaRishon was the first day. Notice. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. Why does the scripture tell us about the Sabbath day is the seventh day? So it makes sense that the way they looked at the days of the week was not by the names of these uh, other people's Elohim, gods, devils, or whatever, or, or planets, or moon, or stars, or whatever, but named it simply, they numbered it. The only day in the week that basically had a name, according to the scripture, and according to Robaino, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the only day that really had a name, right, a firm fixed name, was the seventh day, the end of the set known as the Shabbat day. So here, this proves that there was rites and rituals in the heart of the Torah, we're in Leviticus chapter 23, 
that were observed and to be observed by the commandment and according to the covenant on the first day of the week. Now, I'm not going to go like some people will say, well, that's Sunday. No, I'm not going to fool you like they try to fool you. You know what I mean? You know, when they tell you a little bit of truth and they wrap up a lie around it. No, it's correct. We, we didn't have no Sunday worship as far as the first day was the first day. We didn't regard it as the sun's day. Exactly. It was the first day. So what's proving is that according to this, there is a rite and a ritual that goes on. Now, what is this that the brother just read here from Leviticus chapter 23, verse 11 that you see on the screen? This is one of the feasts of Jehovah. This here is the third of the seven appointed feasts and festivals given to the Bnei Yisrael, the sons of the children of Israel, by Yahuwah Jehovah to be observed. There were seven feasts and festivals that occurred in three times, and they all are found in this chapter, chapter 23. What's interesting is at the beginning, when the feasts and the festivals are being proclaimed to Yisrael, what's interesting is that the first actually is not one of the seventh, but it would, could be considered the eighth. The first one is the Sabbath. The first thing that you read when you read in Leviticus chapter 23, when John explains the Sabbath and the feast. The Sabbath, the singular Sabbath, the seventh day, and the seven feasts. So look at the number seven. So when you're reading that from the top of the chapter, the first thing he explains, the six days shall work be done in verse three, but the seventh day is the Shabbat, is the Sabbath, a rest, a holy convocation, a set apart, out called gathering. Y'all shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahuwah in all your dwellings. This is interesting because if you scroll, if you scroll to verse nine, in, in, in the same Bible that I have, scroll to verse 9 for a moment. And you'll see where it says, And Yahuwah spake to Moshe, saying, What did Jehovah say to Moses? Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When ye be come into the land which I give to you. Now, according to the Old Covenant, this is saying that they had to do what? They, they had to enter into the land. They were not in the land when they first got this. But it's basically telling them that when you get there, like somebody saying, well, when you get there, this is what you're to do. Do this right here. Do this everywhere. The Sabbath is to be done in all of our dwellings. I'm just trying to make that distinction. That some of the feasts and the festivals, in order to be properly observed by those to whom certain things were due. For example, this is speaking to the children of Israel. It's not speaking to the children of any other nation. So I want to dismiss people who like to try to come up in here and, and you know, with ones and ones who, who we are seeking this, especially as being ethnic Israel and as, 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 as faithful in the Moshiach, seeking to understand this. Let's overstand that this is speaking to Israel and not to any other nation. I want to just make that clear because then we could dismiss a lot of this, you know, a lot of arguments, you know what I mean, by like ones who will say, Half not God said, yay, half not God said. You know, we don't want to get into those discussions with those ones. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know, half not, yay, half not God said that you can't eat of all the trees. You know, those ones who won't come up. It, you know, that conversation should not have even gone on. You know what I mean? So this is to the children of Israel that the Sabbath is the first and the main one that we will observe. And then it goes into Passover in verse 4. Then in verse 6, it talks about the unleavened bread for seven days. And then when we get to verse 9 and 10, particularly verse 10, it says, When you be come into the land which I give to you and shall reap the harvest thereof, then y'all shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. Now, the point I'm seeking to make right here is this is connected with the first of the three times in the year with the Passover unleavened bread season. And reading on, it says right here, it says, and he shall wave the sheaf before Yahweh Jehovah to be accepted for you on the morrow, the day after the Sabbath. The priest shall wave it. Pause right here. Just to give this connection here. Now, why is verse 9 10 11 in this section important because this is when passover unleavened bread was going on 
So let's take when Yeshua is said to have been um, crucified or hung on the tree, the cross of the, tr the the tree of his cross, the cross of his tree. Right? It was the Last Supper. I'm going to go over it. We get into detail. The Last Supper was on what we call. I'm going to use the week that we use today. It was on the the Tuesday, right? Or what we call the third day, right? From from nighttime coming in on the Tuesday. Right, see, for the Hebrews, when the nighttime comes in, say on a Tuesday, we already are beginning the eve of Wednesday. We're already going forward into the Wednesday, just to make ones understand that. And it's at that time after they had the 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 broken bread and the wine that they went to the garden, and that and Judas already was dismissed. So he was dismissed Tuesday, like going into the evening, going like from from later on in the day, going into the evening. Right, because evening and morning is one day. So the Hebrews account the days, not the way we account. From the it says um, Nisan, the fourteenth of Nisan, which is a Wednesday. Well, the fourteenth of Nisan, the fourteenth of Nisan. Remember the Passover. Now this is getting into some detailed areas, and I don't want to. I don't want to blow past it. But if we need to go over it, let's go over it because Passover is supposed to occur between the evenings, like the Exodus, between the evenings. In other words, between, as it says right here, it says in verse, uh, use that verse uh, four, right? Four, five, five. In the 14th day of the first month at even, at the evening is Yahuwah's Pesah, is Jehovah's Passover. So between the evening of the 14th right the 14th between the evenings that, that's an exodus when he says between the evenings right so between the 14th Yeshua and his disciples right actually were observing in that upper room they was observing the witch come on the Tuesday then the whole back and forth thing that we get when they were sending Yeshua back and forth between Herod and Pilate and, and, and the Jews and the Yehudi. They had that Sanhedrin. They had court at night, which was a violation. We never was to have court at night. Court will always be in the day. But they had this court at night, this whole barbed wire act. All that we read about what happened to Yeshua from, the, from after Passover or after actually his supper. The Passover actually was still to come on the next day. We can get into that. The Passover was still to come the next day. So the Passover day of that particular week was Wednesday. But the Wednesday begins from the Hebrew calculation on what we call today Tuesday evening. If you understand what I'm saying. Tuesday evening. Right? Because evening and morning is one day. So it's, it's kind of like the total opposite Remember that, like the Bible said, the devil and the Antichrist will seek to change times and laws. So we live in this Gregorian. They've mixed us up as far as time. So in order to understand the true biblical time of these events that happen, the first thing we have to spend a little bit of time is understanding how time was accounting in the Bible, not like we count time today. Like today, we talk about 24-hour days, right? According to Yeshua, Jesus Christ in the Bible says, Know ye not that there are 12 hours in a day. So I ask you, who is correct? The world that said there's 24 hours in a day? I've, I hear people trying to break down the Bible, talk about 24 hours a day. I know they're off right there. They're off. You know what I mean? So it was a Tuesday. It was Tuesday when they broke that bread and everything. And then afterward, the Bible tells us they went out to the garden. They had like this garden spot. It's like, you know, back the homies going to the park. You know what I'm saying? They went out to the, to the garden. But by this time, Judas was already Iscariot, Iscariot, as the Ethiopians call him by his last name, not his first. Iscariot was already dismissed. Iscariot was already dismissed. So split the screen right here. Iscariot was, was bargaining with the Pharisees and the rest of them to betray. You know, with the religious leaders and the elders, the scribes, chief priests, all of them to betray. Yeshua is off in the garden with his disciples. Remember how he told his disciples, can't you pray with me for one hour and everything? Yeah. You know, so he's off in the garden praying and everything. They fall into sleep. Those scenes that we are reading about the disciples falling into sleep. And then Judas is coming back with the, um, with the guards. 
the guards, the temple guards, or whoever they were that worked for the Sanhedrin, the, 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 the council, they, they were coming into the garden, and then when they came into the garden, they didn't know who he was, so that's why they had to have Judas there to point him out, because one brethren looked like another brethren. <laughs> the kiss of death. Yeah, basically. You know, well, actually, the kiss of peace, but, but he turned it into, he violated even that which was holy. You know what I mean? Like, like a man, a man, a man kind of daps up a man, or even mine and mine in more decent time, hug up a man. You know what I mean? But, but one man is thinking of it, his intention is good, but the next man got some funny business. That was Iscariot. He basically was pointing out, this is him, because they couldn't tell who he was. That's the interesting part of the whole narrative is that they needed somebody to point out who he was. You know what I mean? Because he was so, Yeshua was so much in them streets that they couldn't tell one, you know, one dread from the next dread. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really, you know, they needed somebody on the inside. So that now, all that is occurring like as we're getting into like 8 and 9 o'clock, what we call like 8 and 9 o'clock at night. And as we're getting into the early hours, so they arrested him. Then we got we go into the midnight, right? And then they they sent him from the 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 trial that the Sanhedrin and the Jewish leaders were having. They sent him, I think, to um to to either Herod back to Pilate, you know, back and forth. All this was going on all night. They beat him and everything. So imagine this from about roughly say nine say yeah about nine o'clock in the garden judas comes a little after that going all the way till we get to not what we call nine o'clock nine a.m that's when the crucifixion began on the wednesday at nine a.m so so from tuesday evening they're supping together they're breaking bread Judas dips his thing in the master's thing. Yeshua points it out to John. John wrote it down and everything. And he says, go, yeah, do what you got to do and do it quickly. And nobody really understood so much at that time what Yeshua was saying to him. Because he said, the one that dips his thing in my, in my dip is the one that's going to snitch. You know, is the one that's going to betray. You know, and then he, he told Judas, go ahead and do what, you know what I mean, you're going to do. So Judas wasn't there for the fullness of the meal, what Yeshua was saying, you know, in that communion and everything else. Because, um, so what Yeshua was having there was his Passover, but it still was in the proper time to have Passover. There's a tradition about how things was done, like in the temple, you know, like Orthodox religion, even then they had Orthodox religion. But if you look in the law, I'm not going to say there was wiggle room, but there was room you know what I mean? As it says in Exodus, between the evenings. I, I, write that down if you want me to prove that. Between the evenings. You know, in other words, between, you know, 14th, you know, uh, and before the 15th. It just had to be before the 15th. And so when would the 15th begin? In other words, if the 14th is Wednesday, then the 14th began at sundown on the Tuesday. And it continues from the evening and the night to the day until the evening on the Wednesday. Until the sun, as you say, the light of the sun is going down on the Wednesday. And when the light of the sun is going down on the Wednesday, that is what began the 15th. You know, that right there is what began the 15th. So on the day that Yeshua was on the on the cross on, on the tree, uh, the cross tree, as the Ethiopians say, the cross tree, as he was on the cross tree, this is when the lambs were being slain for Passover in the temple. This is when a lot of that ritual was going on that day, you know, and the people were basically getting ready to have their feast the next evening between the evenings, you know, like you know the next the. the well, I said the next evening on the 14th when the sun is going down. That's why in the Bible when it talks about Joseph running to um, Pilate and, and getting a habeas corpus. Habeas mean give me corpus. Give me the corpse. Give me the body. That's what a habeas corpus is from Roman law. Basically, he wanted to claim the body off of the tree. Because in the Torah says, you know, not to have, you know, even one who is a criminal or whatever who is executed... Don't let their body hang on a tree all night. And besides, it was the high holy day coming in. And this was a Wednesday, correct? 
when he's on the cross from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. is when he's yeah. on the cross, basically. The Wednesday. Just want to clarify that. Yeah, and as the middle of the week, true, the fourth day of the what we would call the fourth day of the week, the middle of the week, and it's as the sun was the going... Huh? Like the Bible said in the midst. In the midst, yeah, Daniel's prophecy says that the Messiah shall be, you know, um, yeah, the Messiah shall be... Uh, how, how, how to say it again in the King James Version? In the midst of the week, he shall be... I don't know if it says slain. I'm... I'm I'm just going back and forth on that point right there for a moment. Give me one moment right here. Um, Shelby, I'm, I'm trying to remember that old King Jamesian language right there. Um, in the midst of the week, in the midst, okay, right here. Cut off, cut off, cut off. That's it. Oh, yes, cut off. Cut off, the old King Jamesian. Cut off is is Daniel, Daniel nine and twenty six. Just a just a little segue moment. It's, as soon as you said it, I remember it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd it be that way, right? It, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and to the end of the war, to the end of the war, desolation are determined. Actually, we were talking about that the other day when we were talking about all these wars going on. Another way of reading that verse, maybe Jehovah Witness might bring it out in their translation. Sometimes they do give a better insight because they do study the Hebrew. It says that wars are appointed until the end. You know, in other words, wars, in other words, that there will be wars until the end of this, this, this dispensation. In other words, we're in a time of perpetual war. It's like what his master says, right? Until those nine untils are fulfilled. What he said, everywhere is war. You know what I mean? Until until the righteous thing is done, while there's still wickedness, there's going to be blood. There's going to be the sword. You, you, you can't stop it until justice, until justice prevails. When justice prevails, then, you know, then we can we can beat our swords into plowshares. <laughs> you know, but back to this right here. Yeah, the, we call them these, we call them these to the resurrection. Uh, we, you know, we, you know, we, um, we clarify that he's on the tree, on the tree cross, on Wednesday. So that is one clarification at a day and time, and and and, and also, and also, and also that that by 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 time the evening, by time the evening is coming in, by time the evening is coming in, right? When 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 Joseph Armenteia told Pilate, give me the body, and then he rushed to bury him in his own tomb. You know that part of that, right? Yeah. To bury him. Because the feast, the high holy day is the beginning. Right? Now, the I have a question. Mm -hmm. Did that burial of putting him in the tomb, that happened before the sunset? Correct or not? Scripture. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures, I, I, we will we'll have to go to the scripture. I, I don't want to just, even even though I trust what I'm thinking, but I want to I want to verify it. That's why I say scripture, you know. <laughs> um, well, let's go right here. Let's go right here. Cause we're in scripture because this scripture here in Leviticus is important because when it says Yeshua is the first fruit, you've heard that before, right? Yes. And this is because on the day that Yeshua had raised or resurrected right corresponded with that sunday that first day of the week when mary and and the others had came to the tomb and, and those scenes there so when counting from thursday that's what the ethiopian some early christians used to call it modi modi thursday there's an old tradition about modi thursday and it occurs in some of the older churches right during the time of um of 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 passover or what they call easter of, of the time of the crucifixion of yeshua so we have wednesday no 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 thursday friday saturday so he no doubt was you know the spirit he gave the spirit into the hand of his father so by the time they put him there it probably was right around that time but i want to find the verse where 
where it talk about Joseph of Arimathea. But I'm pointing to this area in Leviticus because when it says in the New Testament that Yeshua fulfilled um, the types, the Old Testament types, what they notice is that, well, we had this sup with him, right? As the Passover sup is, right? And he was crucified, right? And, and he was put in the tomb. In other words, he was, he was put in the tomb. That's the first, it begins with the first night. The first night would be Wednesday, what we call Wednesday night, but what the scripture will call the Thursday evening into the night. So that, that's, that's the first night. When, uh, the Wednesday night going into the Thursday morning, so to speak. So we have a night and then Thursday is a day. Then we have Friday, right? The night and the day. And then we have Saturday, the Sabbath day, the night and the day, because scripture tells us that, that Mary and them went with the oils to anoint and prepare him. You know what I mean? Prepare him for, you know, the burial, right? When? Early Sunday morning. Cause notice that the Bible expresses that it was like early, like 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 how we call it, like sat. You know when Saturday night is going into Sunday morning. When the Saturday yeah. night, like we all we out all Saturday night and we recognize, oh man, this is church day. <laughs> but it's around that early hours of the morning, say maybe between three, four, but just before dawn, she's going forward to the what you call. So that already is Sunday. In other words, that already is Sunday. By the time the Sabbath sun set comes, it's already technically Sunday, according to Hebrew calculation. So by the time the Sabbath is a Sabbath day, he didn't say the Sabbath night. You notice that, right? He didn't say keep the Sabbath night. He said keep the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is all day from, from the seventh day when the sun rises or the shines to when the sun is no longer shining. But by the time Saturday, so-called night, the Sabbath is over. And that begins, according to Hebrew calculations, Sunday. That's the evening right there. So how many days was he in there? Well, from the evening of Wednesday, right, to the night, that counts the first night, which will be the fifth. The fifth day has begun. According to Hebrew calculations, the fifth day has begun at Wednesday night. So what we call Wednesday night is really the evening of the fifth day. And then when when the sun comes up, you know, when the sunshine shines, that is the day. And the fifth day I'm speaking about Thursday. So Thursday Right from the time that he put him in the tomb of Joseph, it was a night, and then the day comes in. And then it's a night, and the day comes in. And then we get to the Sabbath, it's a night, and the day comes in. And that there too is scripture. That's why I don't want to really leave right here, leave Leviticus right here, because as we go further in Leviticus, right, what does it say in verse 12? If you're still there, it says, and y'all shall offer that day when y'all wave the sheaf. Remember, Christ is the first of the begotten of the dead. That's what the Bible said. That's what the early Nazarene said. He is the first begotten of the dead. He is the first fruit, right? And it's like he is the first sheaf of wheat. And then we who are his and are in the way become the sheaves that at, at, at Pentecost, you know, Pentecost is the harvest. It's the fourth. So, so let's go down through this for a moment. Let's go down here to, to um, verse 15. If you can get to verse 15. Cause what I'm trying to show is that in Leviticus chapter 23, right? Chapter 23, verse 10 and verse 11, it corresponds when ones went to the temple to wave the sheaf of wheat at that time because when was that that time supposed to be it, the day after the sabbath so yeshua is wednesday or, or, or the middle the fourth day of the week so he's in the grave uh for, for the fifth day thursday the sixth day 
Friday and the seventh day, Saturday. And by the time Mary and the other woman and the witnesses come, they see a what kind of a tomb, an empty tomb. Okay, that's the question I got to ask. That's that's what was that's what exactly what I was waiting for you to get to right there. Okay, <laughs> I was waiting for you to get to that right here. No, when they got there Sunday morning, the tomb was empty. Yeah, but Sunday morning is already Sunday would be the fourth day in that in that in, in that county. By the time Sunday comes, Sunday is the fourth day. And Sunday is the morrow after the Sabbath. He was risen, the sheaf of wheat. In other words, first fruits in Leviticus is fulfilled in the Messiah's resurrection. That's how it was understood. That's why Paul says all he talks about, about the first, he's the first fruit. He's the first fruit risen. You know what I mean? And then we who are in him will rise later on because he is the first one risen. So by the time they get to Sunday... Yeah, but, but by the time they get there, he gone. So I trying to figure out putting myself in the time. The check, I would like to put myself in the time. If I live in that time, I want to know from wherever the guards, them who were guarding that, that tomb, what time it was when I realized something wrong. Okay. Then. Was that before sunset? After sunset? That's my question. Yeah, we have to look in the script and see whether that's specifically. That's a great question. That's a great yeah. question. I, I like to put myself in the time from time to see well if I in that time, what will I be trying to figure out? And I be trying to figure out if you're supposed to that man get in this thing, somebody had to know around exactly what time. Something just ain't seen right. Because according to certain narratives, there was a great sound or something happened to where these guards just run and left the tomb. Mm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna have to bring that up. Cause that's a great question there, and um, I'm I'm all focused on this part right here because this part is a part that most Christians today, nowadays Christians miss. But for any Yehudi or Jew, especially one who believes in the Moshiach, this is so obvious. You know that Yeshua, isn't this ironic that he breaks bread with his disciples and that he's crucified on the same day when the priests are slaying the lambs in the tabernacle, then he's put in the tomb of Joseph right when the Feast of Unleavened Bread begins on the on the Thursday, one day, one night and day, Friday, one night and day, and now Saturday, what you, what you said, the question here, putting yourself in the scene, is Saturday, right? Like Friday evening is, 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 is the Sabbath, is a Sabbath Eve. Is, is, Friday evening is the Sabbath Eve, right? You, you, you know what I'm saying there, right? Yeah, yeah. I, know that, I know for some, in this Western Gentile sense, since what they did, think about what the Satans did, what they did. They flipped the whole calendar around. They flipped everything upside down, actually. They actually basically inverted, you know, they inverted the whole thing. They inverted the whole scheme, right? Here, I want to look up the whole thing about the earthquake. There was an earthquake or there was some loud, some angels. I'm trying to remember how the text goes right there. When they, the, the guards... When the guards had 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 the guards were either asleep or something like that. The guards were asleep. Let's see if we find this right here. The guards here, here we go. The captain of the guards. Let's see the guards. What do we have? Does he use the word guards? Um. Okay. The stone. The stone was rolled away. The stone roll. We're gonna look up stone roll. So I'm just going on my other phone right here just to get this right here, the stone roll. Because I think the scripture does. I went over this before, but it's a great question here. Apologies, brothers and sisters. I'm not fully prepared for all my memes and everything, but we just vibes in here. You know, the truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. So sometimes it's almost like this. It's almost like, you know, we be training, right? But sometimes when you be training, like for the boxing ring, sometimes if you jumped, Right? You should be able to defend yourself, right? 
<laughs> so my brother right here is, is you know, iron sharp and iron right here. Okay, here, I got some verses for you. Got some verses for us right here. All right. We have Matthew 27 and 60. There's one section here, Matthew 27 and 60. Right? And I, I want to get to 27 verse 60. Because it's, it, it brings home the sense of what, what, um, what Joseph, what Joseph of Arimathea did. So I'm going to bring this up on the screen so ones can see this. Stone and roll. The key words for anybody using search software for easier find. The key words is stone and roll. Stone and roll. Right? And here you see it right here. Matthew 27, 60. Now the fuller section here. The fuller section right here is let's scroll this back let me scroll this back right because because it says uh, okay this this is where the crucifixion ends it says now from okay let's go back to verse 45 for a moment i'm going go to verse 45 just need to get everything in order here matthew chapter 27 this is the first of the four witnesses here we have matthew 27 and Okay, 45. So we'll go to the 45th verse. The 45th verse, right? 45th verse, it says, okay, wow, I have a, I have a sticker here. The death of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And it says, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land to the ninth hour. Okay, people, people. This is not saying from six o'clock to nine o'clock, because you know nine o'clock will be nighttime in most areas. Six o'clock is actually what ones call um, noon, right? Six o'clock will be noon. Nine o'clock will be two, um, like uh, like two o'clock. Yes. So he was on the cross, according to the scripture, from the third hour. The third hour will be 9 a.m., what we call 9 a.m. So roughly around around noonday, right? Around noon day till um, 3 p.m., there was darkness over the land. And in about the ninth hour, Yeshua, so the ninth hour would be three, what we call 3 p.m. On the, on the fourth day, Wednesday, Yeshua cried. Or shouted out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. Eli, for short, Eli, Eli, highly, highly. My God, my God, Lama, for what? Why? Sabachthani. Why have you like forsaken me or left me? That's to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man, this man call it for Elias now that's the whole reasoning there so it's clear that what he said he was quoting Psalm 20 was that 20 um, that's Psalm 22 he's quoting Psalm 22 yeah let me just get this right here he's quoting Psalm 22 um, quoting Psalm Psalm 22 and 1 he's quoting Psalm 22 and 1 also Psalm 88 and 14. But it says, some of them that stood by, right? Here we go right here, verse uh, 47. Some of them that stood by, when they heard it, when they heard what Yeshua shouted out with a loud voice, they said, this man called for Eliyahu. Eliyahu. Eliyahu is a Elijah. Eliyahu. 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 And straightway, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. Right? Then it says, the rest, the rest of the folks said, let be, leave him alone. Let us see whether Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Elijah, will come to save him. This is interesting. Ain't that something? He's calling... Yeah, and here's what I say about the name Eli Eliyah, right? Eliyah, right? E L I A H or E L Y A H. If you look at it in a mirror image, it's Hila, Hila, 
But anyway, we'll touch on that. V verse 50, right? Yeshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up, they say the ghost, but actually I'm showing the people on the screen, that's the Greek word pneuma, and pneuma is spirit. So it's not ghost. He, he yielded up the spirit, the wind, the breath, basically the breath, the spirit, right? He yielded up the spirit, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. So it's showing us right here that while they were crucifying him here during Passover time, on the middle of the week, right, when he yielded up his spirit, his breath, right, the veil in the temple just suddenly ripped in two. But get this, how did it rip? It ripped from top to bottom. That's deep, right? It ripped from the top to the bottom. Usually we think it would rip from bottom to top, right? But it ripped from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. So now this is like almost like a twilight time, or like a twilight zone time, according to what's written here, right? But notice how it's connecting what happens to Yeshua, right? The real... Uh, uh, the real high priest as well as the real offering the real lamb and what the priests were doing in preparation for Passover you know what I'm saying so while they, they remember he was crucified outside of the city notice he was crucified outside of the city this was not in Jerusalem but it was outside of the city outside the walls that, that roots tune that roots reggae tune Walls of Jerusalem, Yabiyu, outside the walls of Jerusalem. So now while this all happened, we have this testimony here, verse 50, 53. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. Now, what's interesting about this here, it seems to be happening one thing after the next, right? However... Right? We don't know the time of this. All we know is that it was after 3 o'clock, sometime after 3 o'clock. There's some words. People heard some things. Then he yielded up the spirit. And then it says, and behold. Like even, notice, the Bible begins sentences with and. One has to understand language. Right? <laughs> when it says and something. You know, so so there's a, there's some time here. We can either ask, did this happen immediately? Now notice the Bible uses the phrase immediately. It says and immediately in other areas of the Bible it does use immediately. Here it says, and behold, look, that the temple veil was rent, the graves were open, many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves out of the graves after notice is after his resurrection and went into the holy city that appeared to many so there must have been a lot of stuff going on at this time all this didn't happen just in a five minutes or maybe even an hour but 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 in these hours you have to remember at this time everybody's preparing for passover everybody's preparing for unleavened bread you know what i mean they're preparing to eat the matzah all of that now when the centurion now now here we have the centurion, right? I call them the, I call them the cops, cops, the centurion of the pope, COP, right? Then the centurion, when the centurion and they that were with him watching Yeshua saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly saying, truly this was the son of God. Now, this is interesting right here, 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 because here, this gives the idea that this was going on while he's still on the cross, right? It would seem so. Yeah. And many women, verse 55, were there beholding afar off. So definitely, all this is going on, right? Things are happening. Notice, they're outside of the city. Remember, he was crucified outside of the walls of Jerusalem. But it's telling us that these ones, the saints who had, notice, it, it said the saints. Notice that? It didn't say that just people who died. But it said the saints, like holy ones, ones who were seeking to, you know, set apart their lives to right choiceness. 
Hail out to Vaughn Benjamin. You know, to righteousness, to right choiceness. Give thanks, Brother Seymour, you know, for that right there. That they were the ones who were appearing to people. So people were getting either spooked or whatever in the city. Remember, it said in the city, right? Didn't it say in the city? Did, did, did I miss something right there? It no. Said, it, said the, it said they went into the holy city, but Yeshua is still here on the cross. Outside the city walls. Verse 55, and many women were there beholding afar off. Heal up to the daughters. You know what I mean? Which followed Yeshua from Galilee, Galilee from Galilee ministering to him. Right? So these were like, we say like homegirls. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> Among which was Mary Magdalene, Maria Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James, and Jose. Right? Or Joseph, for short, Jose, right? Or Jose, and the mother of Zebedee's children. Right? And when the evening was come, now, you see the time? So from 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 noonday, the sixth hour to the ninth hour to three, there was this darkness. Then Yeshua calls out, Eli Eli Lama Sabachthani. They think it's Elias, right? Somebody runs over to give him some vinegar. Right? Then he gives up the ghost or the spirit, right? And then the graves are open. Saints are appearing to many ones, right? And now it says when the even and there's an earthquake and rocks rent, there's a, there's a rumbling, the land is rumbling. And when the even, which is short for evening, was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph. Joseph. Now, he was a Pharisee. I want to mention that the majority Almost like 99% of them, according to what the Bible paints, were, 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 were wrong and ratchet and hated on Yeshua. But we have Nicodemus, who was one of them, who believed in Yeshua. And then we have this man here, Joseph of Arimathea, right? who also himself was Yeshua's disciple. Now, Joseph of Arimathea has a whole interesting story. It is said that in those days, they used to sail to Britain. To Britain, you know Britain in England from from yeah. they they would sail over there to get tin and everything. And there's a connection later on with possibly that Mary Magdalene and others knowing this route, you know what I mean, also may have made their way, you know what I mean, up to into Europe. So some of these things that we hear might have some truth to it, but that's a whole other reason, man. We just want to point out big up to Joseph of Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea, who also what it says, who also himself was Yeshua's Talmud. He was a disciple. So even though men like Joseph and men like um, Nicodemus, even though they were Pharisees and they were rabbis, check it, they were Yeshua's Talmud disciple. So Yeshua was their rabbi, right? right? And he went to he went to who? He went to Pilate, right? Who had a wife, Pilate's wife was though she was a gentile she was a nazarene she was a believer right and begged the body of yeshua this is what we talk about habeas corpus because in latin law you know like today if you're in prison and your lawyer want to get you out he goes to the judge or he or she go to the judge to get a habeas corpus but back in the days it was literally a habeas corpus give me the body so he begged the body of yeshua begged in a sense in a legal sense you know that's another way of saying like when you petition the court you really are begging right then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered right to be given over and when Joseph had taken the body of Yeshua he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb so so at what time of the day did he lay it in his tomb it had to be sometime in the evening, when the evening was coming in. You know, when the sun, when, when the light of the sun is rolling away and darkness is rolling in. He ran to, to, to Pilate and he begged the body, you know, and he got the body and he put the body in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled and, notice it, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. Now I'm sure he probably maybe had some ones and ones with him, but if he didn't, he's strong, strong man, right? <laughs> but, 
I'm a usually usually when the boss does something, it's other people who do things for them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Verse 61 it says, and there was Mary Magdalene. Where was Mary? Was she like Peter and the rest of them? Locked behind closed doors because of fear of their, their brethren? The, the no. Yehudi? No. And there, where was Mary? There was Mariam Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Now notice this. Where are they? Now check this out. This is the first day of unleavened bread coming in on the new day. Think about this. How powerful this is. This is the 15th coming in. They're in the nighttime period of the 15th. They're evening to into nighttime. So Mary and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre, the tomb. Now the next day, uh-oh, are we getting time here? A sense of time? So if we're saying that the sup was on the third day of the week, called Tuesday, they kept eating and reasoning, Judas ran out to do his dirty, Iscariot ran out to do his dirty deed. And then what they did after that, the Bible tells us they went to this, this park, this garden, Gethsemane. They were there reasoning at night while Iscariot is getting his 30 pieces of silver and bringing them back, you know, the, um, the, 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 the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin security to arrest Yeshua, right? And we know that after they arrested him, Right? They took him to, to have a trial before the high priest. That went on for a moment. Then after that, they sent him to um, Pilate. I think Pilate then sent him to Herod. He went back and forth. And you have to think about all this is going on overnight before we get to, to, the, to the fullness of the day, day of Wednesday, of the fourth day. Right? And then finally it was decided, like, Perhaps between like like dawn, after they beat him and everything, between like dawn and the third hour or nine o'clock, they said, "Okay, we're gonna. This is what we're gonna do. Who do you want, Barabbas?" And they said, "No, we don't want Yeshua. Give us Barabbas, crucify. What we're gonna do with you, with with Yeshua?" They said, "Crucify him." So that's when the nine o'clock begins. So we go through this whole day, up until the evening. Right, and then now it tells us the next day. This means this is the fifth day, or Thursday, in the week, that followed the day of the preparation. The chief priests and the Pharisees came together to Pilate, saying, "Sir, we remember that the de that deceiver said." And here's what's interesting: that even in some old um, Judaic writing, even before the European Jews became Jews. I don't know if you heard me. In some old Judaic writing before the Europeans became Jews in 740 AD, they even call one they call Yasu, Yashu. They call him in some things Yashu, right? They call him a deceiver and a, he was a sorcerer, and blah, 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 blah. I'm just saying that, that there's evidence that Yeshua is real, right? That deceiver in the biblical narrative is accurate. Said, while he was yet alive, he said, after three days, I will rise again. <laughs> see, see, they're cutting themselves, right? <laughs> they're going to cut themselves, right? He said, command, therefore, that the, sep the sepulchre be made sure until the third day. Now, what would be the third day? They went on the first day, the, 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 right? The first day is the Thursday. The third day would be the Sabbath day. But you know what they didn't keep in mind? That on the morrow after the Sabbath day is when all faithful Yehudi would take a sheaf of their crop and take it to the temple and wave it before the ark, wave it before the Lord. The temple where the ark is and the ark symbolizes the presence of the Lord. But they would take it and wave it. At this very same time is when Mary beholds the gardener. And that incident is going on. You know what I'm saying right there? Yeah. So he yeah. has... Yeah, didn't recognize it was him until he called on him or something like that. And then later on, they didn't even recognize that, wait, how, what happened? This is, this fulfilled the ritual. This fulfilled the Passover ritual. It was that third day when, when all of us are supposed to take the, the sheaf of wheat that grows and wave it before the Lord as a first sign of the harvest to come 50 days later. The two sevens. 
See, I want to show I want to show that too in Leviticus when when it starts to count towards the harvest. See, the harvest comes right after that. They are commanded to to um, count seven Sabbaths, Shabbats complete. And on the morrow after the seventh Shabbat. So what day would the morrow after the seventh Sabbath be? You see the pattern? It would be the first day. And that's when Yeshua was risen. So this is why among the Nazarenes and later on the Christianoi, and even today to some extent, whether they understand the fullness of it, why the first day is called the Lord's Resurrection Day. But that does not cancel out the Sabbath day. <laughs> There's no command nowhere where it said, don't keep the Sabbath day. Right? So when it says, command therefore the sepulchre be made sure unto the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say to the people, he is risen from the dead, so that the last error shall be worse than the first. You see, their boy, that boy Lucifer, that boy Hasatan was talking to them. Think about it for a moment. You know, <laughs> because notice what they're saying. They are now alleging that the disciples are going to play a trick, right, to deceive the people. They well, went the deception to, came. The deception came because I like what you just said it, that um, this does not nullify the Sabbath, does not nullify the, the law of the seventh day. Now, they are using what we just broke down here and what you just broke down to justify changing the Sabbath to Sunday. They're using the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, to justify their stance on changing the Sabbath to Sunday, which there is nowhere scripturally where that can be proven. Think about for a moment. If, 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 if if there's no Sabbath day, it destroys everything. Think about it. It, 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 it destroys, and that's, and that's the enemy's work. Because notice, it said on the morrow after the Sabbath. The Sabbath is the rest day. Right? And notice something. When Yeshua was risen, they noticed him to be like a gardener. She thought he was a gardener. And when she wanted to hug him and think, what did he say? He said, don't touch me. Because what? He had work to do. He had work to do. Here's the thing. The Sunday never really was, was a rest day, not even for the, for the first century Nazarenes. I won't call them the right name, the first name, Nazarenes. It was not a rest day. You know what would happen on the first day? They would get together after the Sabbath to reason on the business. That's what the Sunday was. The Sunday was all about the business Think about it in an orderly sense. If the Sabbath is the seventh day, it's the end of the set, right? It's the end of the, the cycle, that, that, that cycle of, of the seven days of the set. When will you begin a new set? <laughs> you begin on the first day, right? You begin with one. And that's when you read further in Leviticus 23 when it says, count seven Sabbaths complete. Now notice, in order to come to Pentecost, what they call Pentecost, which basically is the 50th day or the harvest day, right? So two things are being compared. Agricultural rites and rituals are being compared with a spiritual fulfillment. So just as man and man would bring the sheaf of wheat that grows from the ground, that the Almighty causes to rise and grow from the ground and wave it before the Lord, Yeshua was risen on that same day. And then they had to wait, right, until Pentecost, until harvest was fully come in the upper room of Zion. And in order to do that, they had to wait seven Shabbats. What do you think they did? You think they say, well, we, we're just going to just get together on Sunday. No, that would be against the, you know what I'm saying? It's so idiotic. And they can only do this because, like I read earlier, they said that they go from catechism question and answers that the papacy and the men and people make up and they don't refer to the Bible. You see, catechism sometimes will point to a biblical verse, but they distort the meaning of it. You see what I'm saying? Could they, they, you know, anybody can take a verse out the Bible and if you don't know the Bible, they can make it sound like anything. Sound like Superman, Batman, and Robin. They can make it sound like anything. 
But if you know the Bible, you, you'll know that it's false. And most Christians were able to get fooled even today by Sunday, Sunday worship or the sense of Sunday worship. Well, it's not even the sense of Sunday worship. It's a sense of no Sabbath. That's what it's about. But you know, there's a saying, my brother. It says that um, there's no rest to the... Weary. But how do you say it in the world? There's no rest to the wicked. You ever watch those movies? When they be like, no rest to the wicked. They know they're wicked. And they know they, they, they don't rest. So by taking the Sabbath from the followers and believers of Yeshua or Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, they taking away your rest. They take away your rest. You see, because Yeshua even rested on the Sabbath day. Think about it for a moment. Think about it for a moment. Even on that Sabbath day, he rested. Because otherwise, it would only be it will only be um, two days and three nights. <laughs> Not three days and three nights. You know? And so right here, you see in this one right here, it ends off with that they had set a watch over the tomb. Right? They set a watch over the tomb. Right? Now notice if you go to the next chapter, Matthew 28 at the beginning, where it says, in the end of the Sabbath. Notice that. So what we have in the end of chapter 27 was the Pharisee and scribes and the rest of the, the religious liars and deceivers, they were afraid that, that this three-day prophecy is going to come to pass. You see what I'm saying? And they said, make sure you set some guards there because they're going to try to steal away the body and say he is risen. That means they had a fear that he would rise. And then we go to chapter 28, verse 1, and then it says, in the end of the Sabbath. You know what that means? The end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn, right? As it began to dawn toward the first day. So at the full end of the Sabbath, even into the night, as it went on into the first day of the week. And what's the first day of the week? The first day of the week is what they call Sunday, but notice the Bible doesn't call it Sunday. Notice that. The Bible doesn't even call it Sunday. See, that was their, that was their kind of three-card Monty. The first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Yo, the other Mary stayed close, right? Yeah. The other Mary stayed close. It's like, when you see Mary Magdalene, it's like, and the other Mary. To see the sepulcher, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now, here's a question I have. It seems as though it's saying that when they came there, they saw an angel sitting upon right, the stone, but, this, but there must have been an earthquake. Or it's saying that they witnessed this earthquake. Right? But here we now see the angel... Right, the stone is rolled back, and his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And it says, and for fear of him, the keepers did shake. The keepers. What happened to your centurions, bro? Wasn't they placed there three days ago? About two days ago, three days ago, right? If, if you see, if, if you stand in there, you see what you just explained. Are you going to stay there or are you going to run? For, the, for fear of him, the keepers, for fear of him, for fear of this angel, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. <laughs> you, know, you know, there's a shootout or something, and man of mine just lay down. You, you know the way there? And there was people, a break, they can't even run. Yo, yo, if the, other, if, if, if the ops get to drop like that and spread up the plate, the best thing we can do is just play, you know, you know what I'm saying? They played dead. Play, hey, that's what they did. They, they, they played dead. <laughs> and the angel answered and said, now this is interesting. Notice, what was the question? As my brother said, what was the question? What was the question? All right, what was the question? It says, and the angel answered <laughs> and said to the woman, right? Really, answer or does always literally mean in the Hebrew literally answers like you respond to somebody like you come in the room baby look at your way so you answer them you like you know you tell them yo I'm, I'm here whatever whatever you know what I mean you're responding to the, to what you pick up on fear not ye 
For I know that y'all seek Yeshua who was crucified. He is not here. <laughs> it's only to come in, you come to visit somebody. <laughs> I know you're looking for so-and-so, but he is not here. For he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where Adonai lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There y'all, there shall y'all see him. And lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. Wow. With fear and great joy. And did run. I, I would love to see them daughters running, right? And did <laughs> run to bring his disciples word. Oh, oh wait, wait. He, he 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 didn't tell this to a man, yo, yo. He didn't tell this to a man. No. <laughs> he didn't tell the two brethren and say go tell the other brethren. No, these no. two these two women they were there. They were on duty. They were on duty. They went to check in to see what. Why? Because they're thinking about these three days too. You know what I mean? They're, they're thinking about these three days resurrection. Obviously, they kept Mar it's Mary Magdalene. You know, if anybody really had hope and expectation that Yeshua would keep his word. Right? It was her and the other Mary. Big up to the other Mary. <laughs> and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Yeshua met them. What? Yeshua met them saying, All hail. <laughs> All hail. Highly I. All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him now here's what's interesting you notice how in some of the other gospels it seems to give a slightly different narrative right because in the other one we have mary by herself right yes. here we have mary magdalene and the other mary right but they came and they they held him by the feet and they worshiped him i don't want to look at that word that they worshiped him could worship him right here Pros cuneo, it means like to kiss the hand, right? In the east, especially among Persians and Ethiopians and other eastern peoples, to fall upon the knees and touch the ground with the forehead as an expression of profound reverence, right? By kneeling, prostrating. So they basically, you know, show that respect, you know. But literally, the word means like to. Like, 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 like to kiss in a sense, like a dog licking the master's hand. That's the, the Greek sense of it. But they worshiped him, right? So I, w I want one to say, oh, don't worship Yeshua. Well, well, well what, 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 what's the on? And they said, Yeshua, then said Yeshua to them, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me, right? Now, when they were, were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and shewed to the chief priests all the things that were done. Oh, those are the boys who were playing dead, right? Right? They, <laughs> they wake up, but notice what they did. They, the watch, they called the watch, they went into the city to tell the chief priests, the same boys who conspired to do that to Robonai. You know what I mean? And I and I. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money to the soldiers. <laughs> well, like a story, you know. They gave, notice what I said, it didn't say they gave money. They gave large money. Large money, you know what I mean? <laughs> Saying, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. While you slept, but, you're, but aren't you the watch? Aren't you the watch? You will make up that story, I know, for you. Yeah, because in the daytime, maybe you could get a little rest, catch a couple of Z's, because usually people will try to steal something at night. Because they, you know, in daytime, too, it's too busy to do something like that. Everybody's going to see you. You could sneak around at night. So while they slept, okay, and, and you slept at night, and y'all are, are centurions, y'all are guards? What kind of thing? And, you know, they need to be court martialed. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they're paying off the guards of the governor. Cause remember, Pilate sent centurion Romans. You know what I mean? So the Roman centurion is like the cops. The cops, you know, the cops on the take. 
they wanted to take. So they took. <laughs> so they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Yehudi until this day. You know what I mean? So I, so I just wanted to show that part right there. So on the three days and three nights. So yes, the first day is both the day of the first fruits. And also the first day is when the, the, the harvest, the Pentecost harvest is to be observed. But not for the reason that nowadays Christians be telling you. It has nothing to do with the with absorbing the Shabbat. No, it's actually what you what we do after. See, we get together on the, the day, first day. The day, the, the day after the and Shabbat. The, yeah, yeah. The day after. So, so see, if you take away the Shabbat, how we know what day to get together? You know what I mean? And that's exactly what the Romans and them do. You know what I mean? But but notice this part. I just want to take up to this part, verse seventeen, verse sixteen and seventeen. Then the eleven disciples went away. Wait, eleven? Somebody missing? Oh, that's the boy who hung himself. Mm. It's carried. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Yeshua had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But notice what it says? But some doubted. That's interesting. You know what I mean? Some doubted. Now, notice, the ones who doubted, you know who we know who didn't doubt? Who are, who are not part of the 11? Is those two women. <laughs> not for a second, they did <laughs> Not for a, a nanosecond. <laughs> not for a, a millisecond. No, they didn't doubt. But among the 11, you know, Peter, Peter and the brethren, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Yeshua came and spake to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go. Ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. It didn't say in the names. It says in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So it's one name, right? Of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. So why do Christians... Be talking about Jesus coming back if the Bible says I'm with you always. I'm just thinking, like if, if he's with me always, right? Then I shouldn't get so caught up on if he comes well, he's already with me, right? What the problem <laughs> is there's some of them not with him. <laughs> oh, so that, that's why they, they worry about when he's coming back. Yeah, they oh, left okay, they left him. Thank you. <laughs> Mystical bounce right there. Dap up, dap up on that one right there. <laughs> so he says he's with them always, but they, 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 they left him. Yeah, they left him. So now we have clarified by breaking down the crucifixion and resurrection. Uh breaking down when the Sabbath is and clarifying that is not on a Sunday, the Sabbath is the seventh day, and there is nowhere scripturally that proves any narrative that the Messiah changed the Sabbath to a Sunday. That is the doing of man and their religious tampering with scripture and the commandments of the Most High. Now, I want to get into this other part here where they say the Sabbath, the Sabbath was no longer, uh, should now no longer be observed after the resurrection of Christ. So now we've clarified that there is no such thing as a Sunday Sabbath. According to the scripture. Uh, According to scriptures, and we're not saying that there's not Sunday worship, there's just not Sunday Sabbath. So, well, well, we don't want to buy well, well, this is something I want to say that the, the Ethiopian church was hated on by the Roman church because they kept the seventh day Sabbath and they also kept the first day as being holy. And by tradition, we hear 
Ethiopians today say the Sabbath of the Christians. This is something that has kind of crept in. This is not really scripture, but over, you know, Ethiopia been in that a long time. You know what I mean? Going way back there. So that has come into a, a saying. So you might hear certain Ethiopians say the Sabbath of the Christians. But according to the true tribe, Ethiopia and the church, even the church, kept the Sabbath. So I just want to point that out, that the Sabbath is, you know, was kept by the Ethiopian church. But a little bit of, um, you know what I mean? A little bit of, uh, um, how can I say, uh, a little bit of addition, this whole Sabbath of the Christians. I just want to point that out. They call it the Sabbath of the Christians. But for the Ethiopian church, that was not without keeping the seventh day Sabbath. But scripturally, my brother is right, because unless you can show us in the scripture, where Sunday is the first day, the Sabbath is the seventh day. One don't replace the other. Both of them, both those days do have their proper role. But the Sabbath is the Sabbath. Just want to just point that out. Go, go through my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the other thing I want to touch on is those who are of the notion that after the resurrection of Christ, there is no more Sabbath to be held, that the Sabbath is not ordained to be held. Now, there is two narratives I came across. One of them I could kind of ride with. I ain't saying I deal with it, but I could kind of ride with it. The notion that we are not supposed to hold the Sabbath after the resurrection of Christ, that is no longer viable. I do not agree with that. That's just me. I ain't telling nobody else what to agree with. I don't agree with that. Now, I come across another thing which says that um, based on what the Messiah was dealing with at the time, we in this time and dispensation is not it would not be unlawful to that point of punishment for ones who do not observe the Sabbath, but it is beneficial to our salvation if we do hold the Sabbath. It is more beneficial for you if you do than if you don't. But there is not that, that type of, uh, I would say, punishment for you who are not holding the Sabbath. So when I came across that reasoning, I could kind of, kind of like ride with that a little bit because I know a lot of people who don't want to go off the Sabbath. They do, do, you know, they do the, um, you know, like the first day worship, and you know, they still give a reverence and thing to the Most High. So that is my reasoning why I say I could kind of ride with that to check. But I believe in you know, in the observation of the Sabbath. Now we see here that in the time of the Messiah when he was walking the earth. That he did not abolish the Sabbath. He was actually doing things on the Sabbath. And I would like to... You have this meme right here. It's the meme we was talking about before we, um, we start to record. When it says uh, the Sabbath came into, a, came into existence for the sake of man, not man for the sake of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. That's from um... Mark 2 and 27. That's Mark 2, 27 and 28. Okay, let me see. I have it over here. Let's go over here. Yes, yes. Okay, so on that particular, on that particular point right there. Um, yeah, okay, I got, <coughs> got it right here. Yeah, Mark, Mark two twenty seven. Sabbath was made for man. It's the rest day. It's a covenant. It's a binding covenant. In fact, when you think about it within the cycle of a week, the seven days, first day is the is, is beginning day, and and then the seventh day is the seal up. 
it's, it's a work and rest. It's, it's a very orderly, you know what I mean? It's a very orderly process. Because most ones know when one just keeps working, 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 you know, it breaks you down if you have no time for rest. You know what I mean? And within the cycle of things, it is a, a day of rest for man. It's for man's benefit. It's for the benefit of man. And anybody who seeks to take that away from man does not want what's best for man. Think about it. That's you know, true. Yeah. You, you know... Uh, hope. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just a brief reason then right there that anyone who, if it was made for man, then why would someone want to take away something that's good for man? <laughs> who would want to do that? <laughs> you know, who would now, want to... There's, there's a few verses well in the New Testament that showed that when the Messiah was, you know, trotting through the heart, that he did stuff on the Sabbath that was basically annoying the the heck out of the the Pharisees and the you know the religious hierarchy at the time. Now, what some people fail to realize that there's more than one reason. There's more than one reason. You know, they try to make it seem like just one thing happened. You know where they crucify him for. No, it's not. It's not one thing. There's a, a bullet points of things that he was dealing with that got him crucified. And the observation of the Sabbath was one of them. Now, what do I mean by that? What he was doing at the time was correcting the laws that are ordained by the Most High to man. Because man had put their own spin on these laws. Facts. Mm -hmm. So when they put their own spin on these laws now, and was controlling the people with their spin, which are still going on today, what the Messiah was doing was correcting these things. So now, we're going to go to a couple of these scriptures. And where we just left off at, at Mark 27, 28, uh, Mark 2, 27, 28. We want to just go into chapter, um, like the verse, uh, um, chapter 3. Okay, Mark, okay, I looked up the verses in New Testament. Okay, Mark. Mark, which chapter? There's like 56 Sabbath mentions in the New Testament. Yeah, Mark, yeah, Mark 2, chapter 3. Okay, we just did Mark 2. Um, excuse me, excuse me. What are you saying there? Yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark 2, 23? Yeah, Mark. No, Mark 2, yeah. Look at Mark 3, just there. Mark chapter 3? Yeah, Mark chapter 3, sorry. Okay, okay no problem. Yeah, Mark okay. chapter 3. Okay, yeah. we there, we there. Yeah, and, and he entered again into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand. And, and they watched him, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him. And he said to the man which had the withered hand, stand forth. And he said to him, to them, and he said to them, those who are watching, right, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath days or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they held their peace. Let's pause on this. Let's pause on this for a quick moment right here. This is what some of you are watching the video. See, I was kind of going around right here. I want to show you this right here. We had talked about this, I think, before. Yes. So this comes in ideally right here. Because what one's 
don't understand was the deep hypocrisy of these ones and ones. I, okay, I actually passed by it when I went through the slides. It's something right here, the Pikua. Okay, yeah, this is it. It's called the Pikua Nefesh, right? Pikua Nefesh. What is the Pikua Nefesh? Let's see, do we have this here? Pikua Nefesh. It is a reasoning that goes way back, even though modern Jews still keep to it. Okay, here, we have this one right here. It's P-I-K-U-A-C-H. P-I-K-U-A-C-H. Pikuach. Pikuach. Nefesh. N-E-F-E-S-H. And basically, it's a principle in, in Torah law about saving a life. Right, saving a life. And it goes like this. That the preservation of human life overrides virtually any other religious rule. When the life of a specific person is in danger, almost any mitzvah lo ta'ase. Mitzvah is like a command lo not ta'ase. You male to do. So a commandment not to do an action of the Torah becomes inapplicable. So in other words, it's a reasonment. So what Yeshua basically asked them is something that they discuss in their own law, basically. That's why he asked them the way he asked them. Notice the way he asked them. He said to them when he knew what they was up to, right? He says, um, is it lawful? That means like, is it kosher, so to speak, to do good on Sabbath days or to do evil? Now, the, the, the real answer to that, well, it is lawful to do good, right? Then he adds on this thing. This is where the Pekua Nefesh comes in, right? So any Yehudis out there, Orthodox, you know what I'm saying. And you know that this is not something new, but this is something that goes back to the earliest times of Hebrews and Israelites and priests and scribes reasoning on Torah. Like how, how like you say, to put it on the ground, to put it in practical application. Right? Is it lawful to do good on Sabbath days or to do evil? Because all it says is that six days you shall work and the seventh day you shall rest and, and not work on, not do what you do on the other days. But what else is it good to do? Right? Is it good to do good or is it good to do evil? Right? And to save life? Is it good to save life or to kill? But now notice their hypocrisy. But they held their peace. It's almost like what we're talking about the three days, right? How the next day they went to Pilate saying that, you know, these guys, these Nazarenes, you know what they're going to do. So play some centurion, some guards right there. And when he had looked around, around, round about on them. Now notice what it said, when he looked, according to King James verses, and when he had looked round about on them. It doesn't, it doesn't say when he looked about on them, but when he looked round about on them with anger. Being grieved for the hardness of their heart. Wait, hold on for a moment. Yeshua experiences anger. Woo! Uh, 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 do you have that in the J, the JW, the, the Jehovah Witness version? You have that one, verse 5? Yeah. Mark 3 and 5. I just want to hear how they bring it out. After looking around at them, mm -hmm. in with Indignation. <laughs> A nice way to say anger. Go ahead. <laughs> being thoroughly grieved mm. at the insensibility of their hearts, he said to the men, to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored. It, it doesn't say whole as the other? No. No, he says his, and his hand was restored. Yes, and his hand was restored. Yeah, because here in King James it said, and his hand was restored whole as the other. But I like how I brought it, brought that, stretch forth, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands. What? Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it, and they say he stretched it out. But yeah, but here's interesting. I think this is the first time, I probably read this before, but you know, you know, sometimes we, we, we see, we see things clearer, we hear things better, you know what I mean? Um, it says, according to King James, it says, he looked around about on them with anger or indignation. 
<laughs> right, but um, um, but still, it, it's like sort of point that most Christians will make you think that it's all love, 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 right? Mm -hmm. It's always but, love. But no the tell you this, man, the tell you what we do in right here, right? Go backwards to Mark chapter two twenty three, and then two, go from twenty three and finish with um like a chapter. To go, we, to go back right where we started. Okay, where it says, okay, when it said, and it came to pass when he went through the, yeah, that was a verse there before. In fact, that's the first incident, even in Mark's gospel. Like, you know, I, told, I said, the Sabbath, it appears like 56 times in yeah. the New Testament. And that was the first one, of the first quotes in Mark's gospel. You know, it's just kind of interesting. That was one of the first quotes in Mark's gospel. But here it says, and it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Shabbat day, Yom HaShabbat. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn, of Khan. And the Pharisees said to him, Behold, look, see, why do they on Yom HaShabbat, on the Sabbath day, that which is not lawful. And he said to them, Have y'all never read what David, David did when he had need and was unhungered? He and they that were with him? <laughs> it's only like saying, Have y'all never read? What are y'all ignorant? Verse 26. How he went into the Beit Elohim or the Beit El Bethel, the house of El, the house of God, in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and did eat the shoe bread. That is not lawful to eat, but for HaKohanim, for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for HaShabbat. Therefore, the Ben Adam, the son of man, is Adon, is Lord, is sovereign, is master, also of HaShabbat, the Sabbath. It's interesting because the Sabbath is often, it's feminine in a sense. It's kind of interesting, you know what I mean? So even there's, a, there's another kind of a play. You know what I mean? Of reasoning, right? Therefore, the son of man, the, the son of Adam, is Adon. The son of Adam is Adon, also of the Shabbat. Notice he says also. Does, does it read that way in, your, in, in the in the Jehovah Witness? Also? Verse 28. It's 28. It does, um, verse 28 says, So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Okay, okay, that, that even... That, but of also it means that he's also lord of other things but he's also lord <laughs> of the sabbath as well and then bring it over here and as he entered into the synagogue there was a man there which had a withered hand now we don't know like how soon after chapter two but it seems just rolling with the narrative so they came to check him on that now even that part that he talks about with david is it well, that ties right? into uh, Matthew, no? If yeah. you go to Matthew, the same thing here, Matthew talking about, that same thing we talking about right here. We're in Matthew 12. Matthew, let's see, Matthew 12, 12 and 1, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, 12, yeah, 12, 1 to 8. Yeah, that, that's actually the first of the 56. Notice the Sabbath, y'all, is found 56 times in the new testament in the new testament so if anyone tries to tell you that oh the sabbath is done away with and try to make you believe make you be lie -y. remember the lies in the midst of belief that that's true then the thing i would say go through just take the time to go through the 56 verses and see what it says matthew 12 and 1 the first one the first sabbath mentioned in the new testament is in matthew chapter 12 verse 1 at that time yeshua went on the sabbath day through the corn through the con and his disciples were and hungered 
and he began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Now, before I even go on, just to give one a quick background, a context of this, there's, even at that early time, like now they have a lot of things written in certain, you know, writings, Judaic writings over the past 2,000 years. But at that time, a lot of the things that became written, like in the Talmud, Mishnah, and other, you know, educational Jewish writings, good and beautiful, bad and ugly, just a lot of things like encyclopedia, you know, like if we were to have a quote of how every Israelite camp views a particular thing, we know a lot of them don't agree you know, even amongst us as Rastafari, sometimes different, you know, mansions don't quite agree on certain things. But imagine if you were to ask similar questions and gather all of their reasonings together. So back at this time, there were additional things that the Pharisees and the religious leaders, the teachers, the rabbis would enjoin upon the people. So the, the law for the Sabbath basically says six days you shall work. And the seventh day is the Sabbath, and on that day you're not going to work. You're going to rest. That's the day of rest, and don't do no work on that, that day. Six days you work, and one day you're going to rest. That's all that Yahweh said, basically, in the Ten Words called the Ten Commandments. But since that time, there's what they call the Sabbath rules. You remember, have you, have you ever looked it up, the, the, the rules for the Sabbath? Now these are not what is written in Hold on for a moment Rules of Sabbath I, I want to just get this right here Yeah, I had, I had actually looked that up one time and, uh, I can't really recall exactly what I, I pulled up What I, 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 I had are, looking for that one time Well, there, there are today that counted as 39 categories Of Sabbath work prohibited by law 39 39 categories just to give a person a context of this, right? So there's 39 categories of work that is not supposed to be done. Now remember, in the fourth command is found in Exodus chapter 20. Just Exodus chapter 20, you know the verse, but if you scroll down, it basically says six days you shall work, and the seventh day is the Sabbath, and one is to keep that set apart, keep that holy or set apart. But here's some of what was going on back then. This is what Yeshua, when you said he came to make things right. He came to do away with the man-made laws. It's almost like we're saying that um, the Sabbath is not done away with and the first day is not Sunday. I mean, it's called Sunday, but you have to get that Sunday business out your mind. That's a program. These are the sort of things that they would say that you could not do. John just said, six days you work. Whatever you do for work, when it comes to seventh day, you don't do it. Don't do no work, rest. But then they started to say, well, what does that mean? So then people started to say, well, no carrying. I'm going to go through some of the, the things that they said that you're not supposed to do on the Sabbath. Carrying, carrying, you know, carrying anything. Burning, extinguishing, finishing, writing, erasing, cooking, washing, sewing, tearing, knotting, untying, shaping, plowing, planting, reaping, harvesting, threshing, winnowing, selecting, sifting, grinding, kneading, combing, spinning, dyeing, chain stitching, warping, weaving, unraveling, building, demolishing, trapping, shearing, slaughtering, skinning, tanning, smoothing, marking. <laughs> this is, this is what Yeshua was was battling against back then because a lot of the people instead of what the Lord says in Exodus let me go to Exodus for a moment right here I want you to hear what Jehovah says right and then compare that with the 39 things that men and people it's like what the pastors and preachers do as well you know it says right here in the fourth command it says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy or set apart six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh Eloheka, Jehovah your Elohim. In it thou shalt do not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within your gates. 
So the other stranger doesn't matter, but the stranger that's in your gates. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the Shabbat day and hallowed it and set it apart. That's all that Jehovah said. But you know what happens with people, even for us sometimes? Well, I see what it, what it says here. Does, does that mean I can't? <laughs> you follow where the questions go, right? You there, bro? Hey, you know, I knew something because I'm making noise over here, turning pages and. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Want, yeah, you know, I'm turning pages and all kind of things. So I want to go up and turning pages. But let me say something real quick there. Uh, concerning, well, you know, concerning what you just speak about there about um, the do's and don'ts on the Sabbath, basically. And this is something just like that I found that is just like straight to the point. Ain't no long thing. It says these are the major points of Shabbat observation. Do none of your normal work. <laughs> One. Two. Rest. Three. Meet with others to worship. Say normal work includes the chores and home projects like house cleaning, yard <laughs> maintenance, and other projects. This does not mean we cannot do simple chores <laughs> like some meal preparation or cleaning up. Yes. If you got, if, like, if you got trash that fall on your floor, and it's because the Sabbath you can walk past that trash all day, you nasty. But but the rabbi said, <laughs> <laughs> the pastor said, <laughs> the preacher said, the, the religious guru, whoever. You're right. You're right. You're right. That brings it out. That brings it out so well. And you know what? While you were saying that, there I was thinking about this right here, where um, uh, Colossians two and sixteen. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in food or in drink, or in respect of a holiday, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath. You know why this, You know why Paul says this right here? Because of what Yeshua is going through right here in Matthew chapter 1. And what I just shared with you, the 39 Sabbath rules that were added by maybe well-meaning Rabbis, I'm talking about even ours, we, the black Jews, Yehudi, you know what I mean? From that time, when the time of our black Lord and Savior. Some of these things probably were good advice. You know, like somebody asks me, they say, listen, on the Sabbath day, um, I might want to do some gardening. You know, I, I would say, maybe don't do that gardening. But then if, it, you know, but now somebody else will hear me and say, well, well, he said don't do no gardening, so gardening is, is, is forbidden. You know, they, they would make up some stuff like that. I'm not saying that you can't do gardening. You know what I mean? Maybe I have to do something in the garden to save save the, the plant life. But what happened is that they added additional rules, and they began to look at the commandments of men being more important than what Yahweh or Jehovah said. You know what I mean? Like... Like you said right there, like if somebody drops some trash on the floor, I spill something. <laughs> you know, I'm drinking something, I spill it. And I say, oh, wait, I got to, you know. And then you call me, I say, yo, bro, can't wait till the Sabbath's over. Well, you said the Sabbath be over. No, but I got it. He said, why? Yeah, I just spill something, man. I can't, I can't work, man. I can't, <laughs> I can't keep it up. <laughs> but no, it, it's not funny, y'all. But sometimes, you know, a lot of people are seeking to do the right thing, Right? And, and, and they want to be well-meaning. Sometimes men and people, like Yeshua said, he said, whatever they observe you to do, do it. Keep the Sabbath. But don't do after their works because they say one thing and do something else. You know what I mean? So they added all these additional things. That's why Paul says in Colossians 2.16, don't let no man therefore judge you in meat or in like meal, right? Or in drink. Or in respect of a holy day. Like, you know, some mind of mine say, I and I not do such and such, right? Listen, if I want to have a stout or a beer or drink some wine, 
as a Rastafari. Guess what? May I do that? Well, I'm gonna let some mind judge me. What? Huh? <laughs> you know, on respect of a holy day. If right now a man of mine want to keep a holy day, make that mind keep it. But notice what Paul is saying. Paul basically is still speaking as a Nazarene, but he's still keeping to Torah. Because what in the world is a Christian? Do, do Christians observe the new moon? Do Christians observe the new moon? I mean, Christians don't. Most Christians don't even keep the Sabbath. See what I mean? You know, or a holy day. Or have a next man judge you. And when he said meat and drinks, now some people may think, well, this means they can eat pork. But notice, Paul as a Yehudi and Yeshua as a Yehudi, they didn't eat pork. So cut out your Gentile way right there. But anyway, a little diversion on that right there because I just want to point out that there were these rules, additional rules that came in. Even there was rules about how far you can walk from your house. That's why they have such a thing called a Sabbath day's journey. <laughs> I don't think you heard me right there. A Sabbath yeah, day's journey. Thing, that yeah. is the... Yeah, go too far. That's, yeah, that, yeah, go too far. Exactly. That's how far you are allowed to walk from your house before the rabbis consider it work. <laughs> I kid you not. So here, just to give that context... Now one can hopefully better understand what Yeshua was going to. At that time, Yeshua went on the Sabbath day through the corn. He's walking through a field of corn on the Sabbath day, and his disciples were in hunger. They were hungry belly. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Notice that they are going through. They're going through. Like, you know, you're passing by somewhere, you grab an apple or something off a tree. You know. But when the Pharisees saw so wait, wait, the Pharisees on the Sabbath day, they was out there looking in the cornfield. They really had eyes on Yeshua, yo. Well, <laughs> but when the Pharisees... I thought they were supposed to be absorbing the Sabbath themselves. Yeah, what? yeah, they are staring what at the fine? wall. Why, why are they staring at the wall somewhere or something like that? <laughs> but when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath. Oh, wow. You know, now Yeshua could say, what, they, they, you mean they're going to their regular jobs or whatever? They're fishing or something like that and taking it to market? But he said to them, have y'all not read what David did when he was in hunger and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of Elohim and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat? Yeshua said, yeah, you want to talk about lawful? Okay, check this. Neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests, right? Or, or, right? Now this part is not, is the, the Mark doesn't have this part, I don't think. This part here, right? Mark witnesses the first part that I just read, but this part, Matthew witnessed, verse five. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Does does Mark talk about this? No, no, I don't think that was in Mark. Yeah, because we just finished one of the Torah readings um, recently. I think it was for the 48th or something. But it was talking about that even on the Sabbath day, the priests were required to give a, uh, the evening, the morning and the evening sacrifice. So, in other words, every day, you know, like there's, there's offerings, right? But on the Sabbath day, the priests, while everybody else is resting, the priests in the temple or in the tabernacle, they still must offer the morning and the evening oblations. According to Torah, this is what Yeshua is saying. Yeshua is saying, listen, Notice this, the priests on the Sabbath day, they still got to work, is what he's basically saying. According to what the Torah says, the priests, right, who are separated from Israel, remember the Yah, Jehovah said the priests are mine, therefore they don't have no inheritance, like Jehovah's their inheritance. So even on the Sabbath day, the priests still have to, because to offer the offerings mean that the animal has to be killed. Don't they do that in the regular week? Don't they do that in weekdays too, the priests? Don't they function in, you know, getting the animals prepared for whatever the sacrifice or whoever has an offering? But the priests have to do that on the Sabbath day, too. That's why he's using this here that if you don't understand how the Torah goes, you don't get the, you don't get the fun part of what Yeshua is saying. 
You know, and you don't even get the part of why they really start to hate him. Because what he is basically doing is showing them that he knows the Torah as good as, no, no, nay, better than they do. Exactly. <laughs> better than they do. When I say as good as, that was a setup, my brother, for the better. <laughs> you know, better than they do. So what, what, what Yeshua is saying right here, just to give ones a kind of a backup for this right here, what he's saying right here is that the priest, right, the priest in the, let's see, Numbers chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. Let's just go to yeah, I feel good we go, Like, I feel good that we're going to jump in Luke. All right, all right, all right. And, and, and this is this is a fuller one to seal up soon, but let's just deal with this here. 28, what was it, 28, what was it, uh, 28, 9, and 10. Numbers 28, 9, and 10. Numbers 28, 9, and 10. Numbers 28, verses 9 and 10, it says, And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deals of flour for a minka a meal offering mingled with oil and the drink offering thereof this is the burnt offering of every sabbath this is the burnt offering of every sabbath beside get this beside in addition to the continual burnt offering and his drink offering so here in Numbers chapter 28, it is what the priest had to do. So when Yeshua says, or have you not read in the law? He's saying in Numbers chapter 28, verses 9 to 10 that we know today, how that on the Sabbath days, the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath. In other words, what he's saying here is they basically are still working on the Sabbath and are blameless. Why? Because they're doing what Josh said that for them and for them only to do. It's only like, mind your business. <laughs> um, but I say to you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if y'all had known what this meaneth, I will not, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. So he's saying to them, but if y'all had known what this means, you know what it means? I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Y'all would not have condemned the guiltless. For the son of man, the Ben Adam, is Adon, is Adonai, is Adonai, even of the Sabbath day. Yes, I. The Luke? Yeah, let me jump in. Like, I, like, I want to go through some, um, some New Testament scriptures before we close up to, you know, to show you know that you know not only when the messiah was walking but after his you know like resurrection and ascension that the sabbath was still being held among the disciples and things so let me start with luke luke chapter 4 verse 16. Okay, yeah luke chapter you. 4 verse 16 here I got you. and that starts and says um he then went to nazareth where he had been brought up in a, and in according to his custom mm. in according to his custom on the sabbath day he entered the synagogue and stood up to read according to his custom and can I point on the sabbath day can I point this out right here this is what yes, this is what we do like after the Shabbat, like on a podcast, where we go to like the Torah readings, and what Yeshua stood up to read was like the prophets, like what we call the Haftarah. I'm just showing that that pattern, even the pattern that we that Rastafari discipleship Yeshiva do, is the same pattern that Yeshua did. Like in the you know when he gathered in the gathering, the Hebrew, the Jewish, you say church, which was, which was a synagogue, that this was his custom to go to the synagogue the gathering we could say the gathering right on the sabbath day and he stood up where you go forward and you know grab the scrolls of torah and you'll read you know like the brothers would read i would read and then like brother sahar had heal up and also brother ross ayerson as well would read you know what i'm saying so yeah, what, see no the brothers then. yeah yes i so so notice what he did he did this on when on the sabbath day because some people say hey Ross Adonis, you're reading the Torah and the prophets and the New Testament reading. That's Jewish. 
Okay. <laughs> that's, that's your hoodie. That's your that's hoodie. Jewish. Correction. <laughs> not correction. Your hoodie, not Jewish. That, 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 with that, you. That's your hoodie fullness, not Jewish. That's your hoodie fullness. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And notice what it says. And there was delivered to him, it might read a little different, but there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Esaias. Yes. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So notice in the year, this is one of the Torah readings and feedings. And we can actually, what is this? This is Luke chapter, Luke chapter four, verse 18 right here. This part here, I have to find the part in the Torah, but this is, this is one of the readings. So in other words, the pattern that we practice today, we can trace it all the way back to the New Testament, what Yeshua did as well. The spirit of Adonai is upon I because he hath anointed me. Somebody asked me, who anointed Yeshua? Well, here, the spirit of the Yahuwah, of Jehovah is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach yes, the gospel, the good news to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister, or like the Gabbai, the Gabbai in the in the synagogue, and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, the Hebrew church, were fastened on him. And he began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? No mention of Mary anyway. And he said to them, Y'all will surely say to me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Notice, he's in his hometown of Nazareth, and he's talking about another city. You know how, how it is when we're repping our city, right? Yes. It ain't nothing different. That's how you know we're Hebrews and Israelites because the same way back then when we was in our own city, he's saying, y'all going to say to me in Nazareth, you're going to say, do what you're doing in Capernaum. You know, what do they call it again? Um, giving back to the hood? What do they call it? Giving back? Don't they talk about that way? Like like if you make yeah. it, you're supposed to give something back. Give back, to back to the hood. <laughs> That's what he's saying to them. And he said, verily, I say to you, no. Prophet is accepted in his own country. So he's in Nazareth talking about the next town. But I tell you. Of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, Eliyah, Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, three and a half, right? When great famine was throughout all the land. But to none of them was Eliyah, Elias, Elijah sent, save except to Sarepta, a city of Sidon, to a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisius or Elisha, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Now, pause. Ask your pastor, why were they filled with wrath? The reason why is basically he is saying that even though you all hear what I said, that these words are fulfilled, it's not going to be good for all of y'all because Elijah, right, that mighty man, right, he just, he just saves one woman, you know, that, that widow, right? And then of the lepers, those who were clean of their leprosy, it wasn't even an Israelite, but a Syrian. So they're like, wait, 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 what are you saying? You know what I mean? You know, we, we like what you said. You said the words were fulfilled. And he's saying, ah, uh, well, you see, here's how it goes. Many are called, few are chosen. That's why they were angry with him. And he rose up and thrust him out of the city. Notice what he did. He's in Nazareth, his hometown. He's talking about the next town, Capernaum. He said, the days are coming where you're going to want me back here again. 
right? And so they rose up and they thrust him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, Nazareth, that they might cast him down headlong. You see what your own people sometimes want to do to you? But he yeah. passing through the midst of them. This is a, I love this verse, bro. You, you know what I mean? Like they got you with your back against the wall, right? But he passing through the midst of them went his way. And what it says, and he came down to Capernaum. So he prophesied, right? A city of Galilee and taught them when? On Sundays? On the Sabbath. No, I thought it said he taught them on a, on, on, on a Sunday, like the preacher, right? It says he taught them on the Sabbath days, right? And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. You know, so we just pause right there. You see, even as we read on, and he left that city from that Sabbath day, he went to the next town over, you know what I mean? And he started to teach them when? On Sabbath day. Day. Now, one would say, wait, if he taught them, doesn't a teacher, isn't a teacher an occupation? Isn't a teacher, yes. like a teacher's work, right? Yes. <laughs> they cut themselves. Let me jump forward um, in the same, same book, uh, Luke chapter 13, verse 10, to, verse 10 to 17. 13, verse 10. Okay, yeah, you got the Sabbath. The Sabbath quotes, and he was teaching in the synagogues on the Sabbath. On the Sabbath, they didn't have a problem with him teaching <laughs> on the in the synagogues on the Sabbath. I mean, a teacher is is a work. And who was teaching? Who who was teaching? And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of inf infirmity. 18 years, wow, and was bowed together and could in no wise lift herself up herself. Wow, you know, you, you know that way there, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And when Yeshua saw her, he called to her, he called her to him, excuse me, he called her to, to him and said to her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified Elohim, Baruch Hashem. Now notice something. Remember that, that other woman, the Canaanite woman that had the devil, demoniac daughter? Yes. He didn't lay hands on her or nothing. You know what I mean? I just want to show you like the difference. Right. You know, he came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Wait. The ruler of the synagogue is not upset that Yeshua is coming doing the work, teaching, as a teacher, on, on the Sabbath day. But the ruler of the synagogue now answered with indignation because that Yeshua had healed on the Sabbath day. Wait, he's teaching on the Sabbath day, right, about the goodness of God. Then he manifests the goodness of Elohim, and somebody has a problem with that. And said to the people, here's what the, syn the ruler of the synagogue said, there are six days in which men ought to work. So they must have known that his work is a healer, right? Yeah. They must have known that, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So now he says, there are six days in which men ought to work, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Wicked. Oh, you see, you. see, see, he's like these pastors and preachers. He's the ruler but of the synagogue. It, but it was their mother. Hmm? I guarantee if it was their mother, they were find the best doctor on the Sabbath. Oh, but wait. So that woman bowed over in whatever terrible pain she was in for like 18 years. He's saying that she should just wait like even one more day when, when the doctor is there, when the physician is there. Wicked. Wicked. And the Lord then answered, Ha Adon. Right? The Adon. The Don of the Dons. The Adon, right? He then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite. <laughs> Thou hypocrite. Right? You know, you, you know, he wasn't, they wasn't talking telepathy. This wasn't telepathy. It wasn't like he was talking in his mind. This was like, you know, the ruler of the synagogue want to call him out. And he says, Thou hypocrite. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? In other words, 
even on the Sabbath day, one will loose the ox all tied up or the ass from the stall and lead them over to the water. Isn't that work? That's work. And ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, not just because she's a woman, right? But this woman, because she's a daughter of Abraham, she's one of our people, man, whom Satan, Satan, have bound. Wow. Whom Satan has bound. Lo, look, these 18 years. He's trying to get across them. Like, what's what, what kind of insensitivity? 18, 18, not, not 18 days. 18 days would be too much for, for many of us. 18 years be loose from this bond. On the Sabbath day, and when he has said these things, all his adversaries, all 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 his satans, because they were his satans, adversaries like a satan, were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced, and all the glorious things for all the glorious things that were done by him. You see, right there, there, there. You know, it's interesting. He was teaching. On the Sabbath day, and teacher is an occupation that some people do five, six days a week. Okay. And he was teaching on the Sabbath day, and then when he saw this woman come in, because you can see it in how Yeshua responds when he says, "And ought not shouldn't this this woman being a daughter of Abraham, you know, whom Satan has bound, the enemy has messed her up for eighteen years." Notice that none of them could do anything for her. You know what I'm saying? For 18 years, none of them could do anything. She probably was going to that same synagogue and none of them could do anything on the Sabbath, off the Sabbath. She's going to suffer for another 18 years up to, like it was up to them? She, she'll suffer forever. You yeah. know what I mean? And they'll probably blame her for her suffering. Bring, bring the next verse, bro. Bring the next John, <laughs> go to um, John chapter 5. Okay, I was about to say, you, we, we couldn't leave John we couldn't leave John out of it. No, yeah, John chapter five, verse nine to eighteen. John chapter five, verses nine to eighteen. And immediately, remember I said by immediately, and immediately yeah. that means right then, after right whatever, then. Right then after whatever happened before. What it says right here? Um, what it says? Okay, yeah, yeah. And what five and nine? Wait, wait, wait. What's going on here? Five and nine. Okay, okay, okay. Let me go into the verse. All right. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Stop, wait, go, back. go back and start at Go back and start at Okay. And Yeshua said to him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk and try. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath, the Shabbat, and the Yehudim, right, who were not right, therefore said to him that was cured, it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This man was, this man was all jacked up. He was, he was... <laughs> He wasn't whole. He was sick, man. <laughs> and the first thing they say, you <laughs> shouldn't be carrying your butt. <laughs> not, they're not even saying like, "Wow, yo, you can walk, man. <laughs> yo, you can walk. Hallelujah, Baruch Hashem." No, they like, they like, you know, you broke in the law. But you know why? Also, this is the background of it, because according to how they were practicing the thing. That when you committed something against the law, you had to pay up. Think about it. This is what they were running a racket. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> if I'm the priest, right? I say, yo, yo, brother Seymour, yo, you know, you, you know, you're wrong, man. You violated. And then you be like, okay, well, well, what is, you know, what, what's the offering? What I say, yo, I like those cows. Yo, you gotta bring a cow, yo. <laughs> This is why he's trying to get across. This is a big reasoning for his crucifixion. This this type of thing that people are paying attention to. The corrections he was making to point out the fallacies in these people's doctrine. The fallacies. 
corrupting the most I think. The fallacies of the game. The fallacies of the Pharisees. I, I, I had to I had to say that. The yes. fallacies of the Pharisees. And, and Martin and many and many modern Jews. Yeah, that, that's going to be another topic. Yeah, 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 put that in a meme. Put that in a meme. Yeah, yeah, the fallacy of the Pharisees, dot, 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 and many modern-day Jews <laughs> who call themselves Jews. Ah, yeah. Okay, so the Jews therefore said to him, that was cured, that was cured. Notice that word cured. That's like healed, like you better. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, he that made me whole, that made me heal, the same said to me, take up thy bed and walk. And you notice what Yeshua told him? He did it. You know yeah. what I mean? And he, and you know, then asked they him, what man is that which said to thee, take up thy bed and walk? You know, I would say, if I was a man, I said, why you keep repeating what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and he that was healed, wist not, wist not is this old English thing. He did not know who it was for Yeshua had conveyed himself away. You know, the, the, the King James, he conveyed himself away. Yes. A, you know, they away. a multitude being in that place. Oh, so he was he was coming by doing some some quick kind of like that oh like some sneak healing. Yeah. Just one wanted to get better so they can praise Yah better. And afterward Yeshua findeth him in the temple. <laughs> Notice that. And afterward Yeshua yo, yo, Yeshua's no joke. He, he, he be he be ghosting he be ghosting them, right? He be <laughs> he be ghosting them. Yeshua findeth him in the temple and said to him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Hmm. Lest a worse thing come to thee. Oh, wow. Mm. So notice, he already, probably the man looked around, right? Because they're, they're pressing this man that was sick, who's carrying around his bed, and they act like he's doing work. Remember, one of the 39 um, 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 Jewish no-nos, right, that they, that they added to, Right, the commandments of men was you can't carry anything. Can you imagine that? So I mean, if I see you carrying a book on a Sabbath day, <laughs> I come up to you and say, "Yo, yo, Ross, you know it's not lawful <laughs> for you to carry that book." <laughs> you know, is it one he just slapped him with the bed? But he said right here. <laughs> For real, like, no, I was thinking about that because I thought if I came up to you like that, a man come up to one like that, they would hit them. With, I know, I was thinking about it, hit them with the book. Like, so you carry it then. Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Now, that's interesting there because he healed the man, but he must have noticed that some way you've been living, you know what I mean, contributed to this illness. You know, it's like the same thing he said to the woman caught in adultery. Not that she was an adulterer. But you could, not, you could not stone her or kill her without her partner because the Torah says bring both, both of them, right? The man and the woman. If you say this man and woman are committing adultery, you bring both of them, not just the woman, not just the man, right? So he says, lest a worse thing happen, the man departed and told the Yehudi, told the religious leaders that it was Yeshua who had made him whole. And therefore did the Yehudim persecute Yeshua and sought to slay him. What? Wait, 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 wait. He, he, wasn't, he wasn't buying and selling, right? He wasn't buying and selling. He wasn't making money. You know what I mean? And every real Yehudi know that, you know, that's important to us, business. Because Yahweh will bless us in the work of our hands. But he's not using his hands to make money to profit himself or any of those things or he's stealing or none of those things but he's healing people and it says that when the Yehudi the Jews or the religious leaders saw right this right they persecuted Yeshua and sought to slay him not even sought to talk to him or reason with him but sought to slay no, him, take him out. but 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 the Bible tells us John tells us Johannan tells us because he had done these things on the Sabbath day but Yeshua answered them my father, Abi, Abi, Abi worketh hitherto, and I work. So you know what Yeshua did right here? Yeshua said, okay, 
you know, let's not play around the bush. You know what I mean? My father works, I work. What, what of it? You know what I mean? Therefore, the Yehudi sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath. What? Did he? <laughs> but said, but said also that Elohim was his father making himself equal with Elohim. Ain't that something? So he said that Elohim, God was his father. And therefore, that means if we say God is our father, right? Then we make ourselves equal with God? No. No, 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 no. I, I say I, I say I. <laughs> you know, father, father and son, Yeshua. Yeshua is our guide, you know what I mean? If they do these things to him, then they got to try to do these things to us so that we know that we're doing the right things. You know what I mean? Because they don't persecute us, right? Then maybe we're not doing the right things. You know what I mean? Maybe we're just like the hypocrites, you know? Then answered Yeshua and said to them, Verily, verily, true, true. Amen, amen, in the Hebrew. Amen, amen, I say to you. The son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth ha'ab, the ab do, the father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. For the father loveth the son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he will shew him greater works than these, that y'all may marvel. For as the father raises up the dead, and quickeneth, give life to them, even so the son quickeneth, give life to whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment to the Son. Ain't that something? That's why it says that your words, our words will judge us. Why? Because the Word became flesh. The Word is the Son. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. Amen, amen. Verily, verily, true, true, the truth, the truth, I say to you. He that heareth my word and believeth and credeth and admit on him that sent me hath eternal life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Amen, amen. I got to go forward. I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the, the Ben Elohim, the Ben Elohim, the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. They that what? Shema Yisrael, Shema, hear O Israel, for as the Father hath life in himself, I love this verse, for as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the son to have life in himself. You know, people looking for the life outside of themselves. But anyway, let's go on. And hath given him authority to execute judgment. Also because he is the Ben Adam. Because he is the son of man. So he has a dual nature. Right? Marvel not, but the dual nature is one. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. It sounds like where we started, right? And shall come forth they that have done good to the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, as I shema, eshma, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of Ha'ab, the Father that sent me. If I be a witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness that he witnessed of me is true. Ye sent to John, and he bear witness of the truth. But I receive not testimony from man. But these things I say that y'all might be saved. 
He was a burning and a shining light, speaking about John. And y'all were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of Yohanan, John, for the works that Ha'ab the Father have given I to finish the same works that I do. Bear witness of me that the Father have sent me. And the Father himself which have sent me hath borne witness of me. Y'all have neither, neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And y'all have not his word abiding in you. For whom he have sent him ye admit not. Search the scriptures. For in them y'all think y'all have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And y'all will not come to me that y'all might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you. That y'all have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my Father's name, and y'all receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him y'all will receive. How can y'all admit, amen, that receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that comes from Exiavia, from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, <laughs> Moshe, in whom y'all trust. For had y'all believed, admitted the truth, Moshe, y'all would have admitted the truth of me. For he wrote of me. But if y'all admit not his writings, how shall y'all admit, credit my words? Wow. You see, because they, they were barking at his healing people. He just went into like 64 bars on them. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, for real. You know what I mean? Uh, but I feel him. I feel him on that. Oh. I mean... Let me jump far away a little bit so we could catch up and, and get, get these little couple of um, ones out of Um We're going to Acts. Acts um, 13. Acts 13. Yeah. Um, 14 and... Wow, wow. 14 and 15. Wow, wow, wow. You did your diligence here. Acts 13, 14, and 15. Yeah. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law, the Torah, and the prophets, the Haftarah, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them saying, Ye men and brethren, if y'all have any word of exhortation of building up for the people, say on, speak on. Go ahead and read the other two verses. Then Paul stood up. I was just meditating this part here. Then Paul stood up and beckoning and beckoning with his hand, he, he made a hand signal, a hand sign, said, Men of Israel, and y'all that fear, reverence Exiavia, reverence Elohim, give audience. The Elohim of this people of Israel chose our fathers, our patriarchs, and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Mitzrayim, of the Tawi, and with a high arm, brought he them out of it. You gonna stop right there. Mm. Yeah, so so this is like after the crucifixion when the disciples are going about, when did they go in and 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 hold reasoning? On the Sabbath day. And how thank you for this verse here, verse fifteen. Because this is a good verse to just show ones what it is that I and I seek to do in the gathering. And after the reading of the law, the Torah, and the prophets, 
You know what I mean? Then the rulers, you know, after the reasoning, it's almost like if anybody, you, you might use this as we come up on the season to come, have more engagement amongst the brothers and sisters. Ye men and brethren, if y'all have any word of exhortation or building up for the people, say on. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me um, say Acts 16, verse 13. Okay, 16 and 13. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a river side where prayer was want one is like where prayer was was the usual thing to be made and we sat down and spake to the woman who resorted thither the woman who were gathered there so notice he said on the sabbath day on the sabbath they went out of the city and they went by riverside where people often pray yes and they sat down and he spake to the woman there that resorted, that went there, I guess, often as well. <laughs> On the Sabbath day. <laughs> On the Sabbath day. It's, it's a fine way to find others, meet, meet others to worship with. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah. You know what? I got these three. Um, you have, Do you have a next one? I'm going to seal it with these three right here. Yeah, I got the next one here. I got the one more in Acts. I got another one in Acts. Acts 17. And two. two. I got that one right here. And Paul, as his manner, as his manner was, that's not like when it says Yeshua, as his custom was to, you know, as, you know, as his manner was, went into them and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. That means for almost the better part of a month, three Sabbath days is like this Shabbat, the next Shabbat, and the Shabbat after. Yeah. He reasoned. He did what? Come make with reason with them. How? Out of their own thoughts, out of the newspaper, out of the scriptures. All right? I have 18. You have 18 and 4? Yeah, 18 and 4, and then the last one will be Hebrews. Well, actually, so 18 and 4, so you're right on track. 18 and 4 well, is the well, next well, one. Well, last two. We got three more. I'm going to go over Colossians 2 and 16. Okay. But but Acts 18 and 4, and he reasoned. There's a lot of reasoning going on here, right, in Acts? Plenty of reasoning. And, that's why it's in. and he reasoned, right, in the synagogue, right? I want to say this. Some people hear mind of mind talk about reasoning and just ch them chat nonsense. They chat nonsense because they go away from his majesty's teaching, from his glory, the Bible. You'll notice here in the glory of his majesty, the Bible, that they reason. Like the early Rastaman, when they reason, the primary reason would be on the scripture, you know, and the teaching of the king of kings. You know what I mean? And no other guy, right? And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Wait, wait. Every other Sabbath? No, every Sabbath. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Yehudim and the Greeks and the Hellenists, right? The Hellenists. So we see right there where after the crucifixion, the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Yeshua HaMoshiach, that his followers, the Nazarenes, and later to be called Christians, that they reasoned on the Sabbath. And they gathered on the Sabbath. Colossians 2.16 again. This once again. Let no man therefore judge you in meal, like what you eat. What you eat, that's kosher according to Torah. That, that, that's the context there. Or in drink. Or in respect of a holy day. They're not talking about the holy days of the heathen. They're talking about those Hebrew days that Yeshua kept. Or of the new moon. Or of the Sabbath days. Or of the Sabbath days. And lastly but not leastly. Are, are you going to Hebrews 4 and 9? Is that where you're going? Actually, I'm going to read Hebrews 4, 1 to 12. To close out. Okay, 4. That would be the last last the last scripture right there all right all right because i got verse nine and it's interesting because where it says there remain of there for a rest a shabbat to the people of god some christians take that verse and make it seem as though that means the sabbath day is done away with 
which couldn't be further from the truth. From the truth, yeah. But well, I think if you start at one and go to twelve, you get nine in there, so it'll give a fuller context. Make I and I, and say let us. We say make I and I, make we therefore reverence, lest a promise being left us of entering into His rest, any of you should seem to come short of it for to us was the gospel the good news preached as well as to them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith admittance in the truth in them that heard it for we that have amen admitted the truth do enter into rest we say shabbat as he said as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day, the Shabbat day, on this wise, and Elohim did rest the seventh day from all his walks. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief because of lack of faith lack of admittance in the truth again he limited he limited a certain day saying in david today after so long a time as it is said today if y'all will hear his voice harden not your hearts psalm 95 there the sabbath psalm for if yeshua had given them rest then he would not afterward have spoken of another day now it's interesting some people say this might be joshua there's a whole big dispute over it but i just say yeshua what we have here verse 9 there remaineth therefore a rest that's pointing to the shabbat to the people of elohim to the people of god for he that is entered into his rest he also have ceased from his own works as elohim did from his let us make I and I labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of lack of faith, lack of hymeno, emuna, admittance, credit. For the word of Elohim is quick and is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we, I and I, have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is past Kohen Gadol, that is passed into the heavens, Yeshua, the Bain Elohim, the Son of God, of Elohim. Make us, make I and I hold fast, firm, our profession. For we have not a Kohen Gadol, a high priest, a big priest, that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin without uckery last verse here verse 16 make us make i and i therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we that i and i may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need amen amen mm, mm. glory to the word Glory to the sound, glory to the power. Of power. Glory. Okay, let me close out on a couple things here. Uh, I'm going to read a couple things. Uh, one of them here is what we were, what part of what we just finished disputing. Uh, it says, until 
this is what they're saying, trying to justify their Sunday Sabbath. Until his resurrection, Jesus Christ and his disciples honored the seventh day as the Sabbath. After his resurrection, Sunday was sacred to the Lord, to Lord's Day in remembrance of his resurrection on that day. That is part of their justification for saying that they changed the Sabbath to Sunday. Just one of the people them to hear that little song where they trying to justify themselves mm. in saying that. Now I got something else that I written down here. Uh, the first one is about the Sabbath. Saturday is the Sabbath, the Yehudi Sabbath from Hebrews Shabbat to rest. is observed throughout the year on the seventh day of the week, Saturday. According to biblical tradition, commemorates the original seventh day. On that day, God, Amlak, rested after completing the creation. Amen. The other one I want to read here is because I wrote this down. I seen these things and I wrote them down to make sure that I had them just to say. He said, Did Jesus, Jesus Christ, fulfill the Sabbath? That's the question. Is Jesus all, is it in Jesus all things were fulfilled? That including the Sabbath. The Sabbath is a moral commandment, meaning it will never go away, and it is for our own good. Although we are not saved by the law, the new heart that Christ gives allows us to delight in trying to obey the law because we love God. I'm like Xavier the most high. Amen, amen, amen. So I wanted to read those couple things before we close out. And I would like to read this one thing that we had that we spoke about all year here again, just to get it back in the conversation about the the Sabbath where it says uh, there are major points of Sabbath these are major points of Sabbath of Sabbath observance do no do none of your normal work one rest two and meet with others to worship Mm. Normal work includes chores and house and home projects like house cleaning, yard maintenance, and other projects. This does not mean we cannot do simple chores like meals, preparation, and cleaning up. Just wanted to get back in there when um, so I could transition to saying if we go back to the whole conversation we were having. In that whole conversation, that whole reasoning, we could see the the type of mentality that the Messiah had to deal with. With these people and their corruption of the doctrine. Mm. Of how they were using the doctrine to, man, to manipulate people not only for their gain, but for power and control of people and to, and to instill fear in people, which is how you control people in most times. You know, people do a lot of things out of fear they normally would not do. And they was using these laws and the doctrines 
and manipulating them in a way that benefits themselves to the detriment of the flock. Mm. And Christ had to come deal with this. Mm. Mm. This is a big reason why they wanted him out. Mm. Because if he exposed them in this kind of way, and showed him, because out of all the things, we will see as far as what he had to deal with with these people, right? This is the one thing that pointed out the hypocrisy mm. more than any other thing that was going on. Mm. The Sabbath mm. pointed out the hypocrisy, shine a light on the hypocrisy these people were dealing with. And that is why I believe the Sabbath is still so important. So now we prove that there is nowhere in Scripture that someone can show to say that the Sabbath was ever seen from the seventh day to the fourth day. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's the fourth thing we break down, and we make sure we broke down not only the crucifixion, but the resurrection and in between. Because they try to use that as their justification, like I just read a while ago, for them changing or uh, saying they changed the Sabbath from the seventh to the first day. So that has been the bomb. Now, there is another one here where they are saying we don't need to keep the Sabbath at all. Hmm. Now, I am not telling anybody what they need to do from what they don't need to do. I am just telling you, don't tell me not to hold the Sabbath. <laughs> you don't want to hold it. I am not telling you to go hold it. I am not forcing nobody to go hold no Sabbath. I send out sabbatical blessings, encouragement, love and well wishing to the children of the Mosai, to the one family and all. So when I send out my 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 sabbatical blessings, even if you don't celebrate the Sabbath and you don't believe in the Sabbath is love I send in you. So I accept it in love. See? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the Messiah come and he leave us with love. <laughs> Yeah, and we, and we and we try our best to rest from anything other than love and that which is good on that day. Uh, so, you know, maybe we'll catch up with you on the first or second day. <laughs> but, but the Sabbath, we try to keep it set apart. Yes, we try to keep the Sabbath holy. Exactly. Because we said earlier, you know, that the... As a matter of fact, let me, let me just, instead of thinking, let me pull it up right here real quick. Go back into the Bible real quick. Mark, well, Mark 2, yeah, okay, yeah, right there, right there, right there. Okay, he said, uh, he said, then he said to them, the Sabbath came into existence for the sake of man and not man for the sake of the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Amen. 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 So like I say, if you don't want to celebrate the Sabbath or observe the Sabbath, I should say, that is on you. I am going to continue to do this. Uh, Amen. Amen. Why? Because as the Master say, it's good for us. It's good for us, you yes. Know, if you don't want to keep it, maybe that's good for you. <laughs> but for us, for me and my house, we'll seek to observe the Shabbat day and rest. It's and like I read earlier in, in one of the things I read, it said that um, the Sabbath is a moral commandment, meaning it will never go away. 
and it is for our own good. But although we are not saved by the law, you know, that part is, when I read that part, I said that's a significant statement right there. And I don't know if you want to opine on that part before we get out of here. You know, no, that not, although we are not saved by the law. No, I think that's, I think that's self-explanatory. We, we might maybe on the headrest we pick up on it, but I think let that resonate, let that marinate right there. You yes, know? sir. And one thing that we are and can produce some scripture We'll do our own research, search and research, and see if we find anything that differs. We don't see anything that differs with that. that yes, sir. And then he closed and said, the new heart that Christ gives us, allows us to delight, allows us to delight in trying to obey the law because we love the most time. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Let's see. Let's see. Let's. let's yeah, man. Another let's full of full, you Shabbat, know. A Shabbat seal for this Shabbat reasoning here. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Debunking the Sabbath change to Sunday. Debunking it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, we give thanks for all who stay tuned and, you know, listen to the end. You know, we give thanks for that, you know. We just hear holding our vibes, you know, vibes in holding our reasoning, you know, so we give thanks for the listen and we hope that, you know, you all get something out of this, you know, I always get something out of it, although he's the one doing the reasoning, that's why I love this so much because uh, it's like a day in school, you know, it's like a, it's like a school session and you have a one-on-one -on -one with the professor, you know, so aye, aye, aye. It's, like, it's always a beautiful reasoning, you know, so we give thanks, you know. I am sharp and I, yes, I for everyone, you know, Rastafari, right, love and light, you know, guidance and detection, and you're going out and you're coming in, you know, as we bless you in the name of Exhibit, Karamawi, Hylis, the last year, and I salute you when I see Ja, yeah. yeah. Rastafari. Yes, I. Yes, I. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, Havarim, shalom. Yo, give thanks. Give thanks for the reason, man. man. And, and that chapter, just read over it again. You know, um, Hebrews chapter 4. Yes, sir. It, it puts into context, even by quoting the Sabbath. You know what I mean? You know, he gives us another another Sabbath and another Sabbath. Good for I and I. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad to get this reason off my chest. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Likewise. Well, give thanks, my brother. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shalom, Khamarim. Shalom. 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 Oh, yeah. Last the first.